first. Mr. Gary used to do that a lot. As a council person, y'all don't never have to worry about seeing my hand because I'll verbally say, Mr. Chairman, so keep that in mind when you want my attention because I, I ain't can't see as good as I used to. So verbally call out, Ms. Mr., uh, Ms. Worthen, you wanted Mr. Moss. Mm -hmm. Mr. Moss, Ms. Worthen. Good evening. Good, good evening. Um, we did see the predictive model uh, just earlier. What is AECOM's interpretation of that predictive model? Let me, let me be honest with you. That model was not discussed in the RFP. That model was not discussed in your RFP. It was not discussed any time during negotiations, nor has it been brought to us. If you read the RFP, there are certain prescriptive things that we were asked to do in terms of looking at how we would do the excavation. So the Michigan model was never brought to our attention by virtue of your RFP during negotiations or any time. We became probably the model start becoming a concept, a discussion, I would say in in April of May. But that model is just an assumption. You know, we're here to, to perform work. Assumptions are like opinions. We, we welcome if, in fact, this body would ask us to meet with them as we go through concluding the properties, then we will. But, but that's what my answer is to you. I'm a math major. So uh, am I. OK, good. Um, I'm a mathematician by training. That's awesome. And, and an engineer. But your question? It surprises me that you would say that mathematics and the statistics that the professor provided is an opinion, because math is not an opinion. Those statistics are fact. And but it, what I'm saying to you, without interrupting you, what I'm saying to you is the assumptions are based on what's underground. We think, as, as, as virtue what has happened, is certainly that's there. But what we've been looking at is, is facts. We've look, we, we have a model as well, OK? But also in doing that, we're looking at excavations. And what we're saying is, irrespective if it's, we're, we're thinking it's another 10,000 elements that have to be done within the contract that we're negotiating and discussing right now for 2019. That's what we, we will, in fact, do. So the model is the model, ma'am. And, okay. and you can, you, we can argue the fact of the model, but I, again, what I say to you is, for us to assume someone's model, then that puts my firm at a tremendous amount of risk, okay? And, that, and, and then we would have had to assess that risk and those elements. In AECOM's professional opinion, is it more efficient to use a predictive model that has a 94% I, I can't address rate? that with you because I would have asked to have my, my, my technical team, my modeling team, to, to make that argument. But again, we were not, that, that, what you are asking me to do was not part of my scope. And if, it, if, if your city dictated that that was that important, then that would have been in my scope of work to use that model. Ms. Worthen, and finish your question. I plan to. Um, so I'm, so you're avoiding the questions about the predictive model. Um, no, ma'am, I'm not it, avoiding it. I'm talking to you directly. <laughs> the model, the model as I exist, does not exist to me because it's not in my scope. I can only do work that's in my scope, ma'am. So and what you, you've negotiated and pay us for. And when he say the scope, he's referring to the scope of the contract. The contract, that's Well, then, correct. let's talk about that, because the scope and the contract said 6,000 line replacements. No, ma'am, it says yes, 6,000 Yes, it did. I have the contract here. Uh, Ms. Fields has it. Every line, it says service line replacements. We can point them out to you. It does not say excavations, and that's all you have said in your in the conference Ms. room Ms. Is Word, excavations. Can you read that part of the contract because can it someone talks help me because I don't have my contract it, it talks marked about up. planning. Mr. President. 
<clears throat> I have those. Miss Fields. But you still got the floor, Miss Worthy. Thank you. For the end point of information, can you read that, Miss Fields? Just look for the you would like me to read that? Please. Yeah. Okay. Um, it says on several places in this contract, mm -hmm. and that's the contract I was referencing. Um, the other says, day, what was we on test, page six? What page is that? Well, unfortunately, they put it under assumptions, and um, it's not numbered per se. But okay. It's part of the contract that I gave So you look under assumptions is where you read. And it says task two. It says the best and final offer is to which is part of your contract. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Three task orders and uh, one B. Excuse me. Three B is um, task order two I. Plan and manage the removal of at least six thousand lead service lines in 2018. And then over here under five, it says field representatives will be provided based upon the following assumptions. And it says 6,000 lead service line replacements in 2018. And then over in um, another part of this, the RFP, I think it is, which is part of the contract, it's page 10. It says um, in 2018 and 2019, manage the replacement of approximately 12,000 red lead service lines. Phases five and six, 6,000 per year. So throughout your contract, and just a moment, throughout your contract, it says lead line replacements, and your presentation tries to give the impression that you were contracted to do excavations. You weren't contracted to do excavations. You were contracted to do lead line service replacements. And if anyone at this city has made any other kind of agreement with you, I will tell you that that has okay, not been Fields, before Okay, Ms. Fields, you kind of going over a little bit. <laughs> you, I just want you to read something in the record for Ms. Worthy, but you kind of like some of us. We get carried away. Um, Ms. Worthy. Okay. So last year, more than 7,000 lead service lines were found and replaced. This year, less than 2,000 lead service lines were found and replaced. Mm -hmm. um, in AECOM's professional opinion, was last year's planning of service line replacements more efficient than this year's planning based only on the number of lead lines that were found and replaced? No, ma'am. I, I, I would not make that argument. What I say to you is we looked at the, what your city has is 10 zones. Is that not correct, Mom? I'm sorry, what the city has is 10 zones. We looked at those 10 zones. We did our research, okay? And from that, we in fact attacked those zones. This is what I say to you, as I said earlier. What we said is we looked at and we excavated, I think it was close to 9,000 units this, this year. Next year, in 2019, Whatever it is in terms of where the lead service systems are from your predictive model or, or actual excavations, that's what we're going to finish doing. I mean, that's what we're negotiating and doing right now, okay? I'm going to call on you, Ms. Fields. Ms. Worthy, let me say this at this juncture, and you can continue if you choose. Keep in mind what we, the type of thing we're dealing with here. In reality, we vote on contracts for contractors in 10 zones. They got contracts, what they should and shouldn't do. They're managing, they're managing the contractors and other aspects. So we got two sets of contracts here. If we as a city want to detail those contractors and their contract in each of the 10 zones, we can talk about that but they manage in contractors who have contracts. As it relates to the last year and this year, I would submit to this council and hear me close, and then I'm gonna call on you, Ms. Fields, if Ms. Worthen is done. <clears throat> I want y'all to hear me close on this. The records of the city was in disarray. Every household needs a good record. I wouldn't care whether they got a red dot, a green dot, or a blue dot, when we got money 
and we can look at each household and compile records. That's what we need to do. Phase five might have more or less replacements than phase four. Phase six might break a record. We getting there. But there was going to be a phase that was going to outdo the other phase. But Councilman Mays believes that every household deserves a fair look, even those with inactive accounts. Ms. Worthing, proceed. <clears throat> I'd just like to address that because the state, NRDC, and the settlement of uh, the concerned pastors all disagree with what you just said. Uh, and I do too. Remember, I don't agree with the concern past the settlement, but anyway, proceed. I don't mind being the oddball. Thank you. Uh, so we have gotten letter after letter from the state, uh, warnings that they're not going to pay for this because we are not using the predictive model and we're not replacing lead lines. This is a very serious matter and it's not within the scope. We didn't hire a e-com to dig up lines that were known to be copper or most likely to be copper. We want to replace lead lines for the safety of our residents. So I, I do have a question. Mm -hmm. um, you said that out of scope task negotiations began in July uh, of 2018. That's correct. I was unaware of council approving any changes to the contract. We have not, as we said those items started negotiating. We've not come to council and asked for anything out of scope. We've been going directly, basically, those things that have been out of scope, we funded and kept moving as we've been moving. So the only time we've come for an amendment is today for this extension. For future work. No, no, that's for, as, as I think there were only two items, one item really, for future, and that is in fact us negotiating 2019, everything else. When I looked at that extension, when you look at that in terms of modification, that is all those items. So you've done work out of the scope without it being approved? What we've done is, that is correct. What we've done is we went to, our, we went to the administration, told them what that was, they asked us to continue to move forward if we could. We were moving forward so that we could keep everything flowing. Yes, we did. I believe the administration uh, misinformed you because council needs to vote on any changes and, to a and, contract. And we, we, that's fine. And we did that at our risk, not yours. Okay. And I have one last question for this round. Um, if city council recommended the model be used for next year's planning and AECOM was still managing Fast Start, would it agree to work with researchers and use the predictive model to plan phase six of replacements? That's the first thing I said to you, ma'am, when we started this debate between you and I. The first thing I said is if it was added to my scope, either amended to my scope or added to my scope, yes, we have no, no problems in doing that. I have more, but I'll yield for others. How many minutes do you use? I don't Let's know. Let's say five. I'll take the five. No, that's okay. You do what you want. I'm, a, I'm not that funny like everybody. Um, Mr. Griggs after Ms. Fields. Ms. Fields. Uh, first, Mr. Chair, are we actually on a motion or is this just... We're we are on a motion. We are on a motion. And the motion is to move to council. Okay. First of all, once again, back to the contract. Mr. Woodson, now you know I, I ain't going to let y'all be interrupting this meeting, but since it was you, I ain't going to even give one warning. <coughs> that was legitimate, but you know I ain't going to do that. But keep doing it, and if it helps facilitate, I ain't mad at you. Ms. Fields? First of all, once again, your presentation is not accurate because everywhere it should say lead line replacements, it says excavations. That is not what your contract said. And in fact, your contract called for 6,000 lead line replacements in 2018. And um, I hear that basically you've um, done 1,479 lead line replacements. So that means you still owe us, per your contract, 4,521 lead line replacements. So I certainly wouldn't be approving any additional money for you because you haven't fulfilled this year's contract. Now, if you were given some other instructions 
okay? And Mr. Benzik and Mr. Newsom, um, I keep hearing references that, oh, well, they worked with you. I'm gonna pass around here um, for counsel, take a few, give it to Janelle. I wanna read something for Newsom and Benzik. This is our purchasing ordinance 3865, section 18211. It says, a modification of a contract must be approved in the same manner that the contract was approved. All contract modifications must be in writing and approved in advance by the city attorney. Now, it's not up to you in your capacity of AECOM to make sure you're following our purchasing and contract ordinances, but it's certainly the administration's responsibility to ensure that is being followed. So if you had some other agreement that was not be brought before council, I would say that's not valid in any way, shape, or form. Again, ma'am, let me say this. There are no side deals. We've not suggested, you've been the only one suggesting side deals. We've not had any side deals. Did but you not pardon me, say, pardon me, ma'am. Did you not say we had an agreement to do an additional 2,000 with Mr. Newsom and Mr. Benzik? No, I didn't say that. No, I, I didn't say that. No, ma'am. Again, I don't know. There are I no side. That was said. Not by me or any of my team. That's not what we said. Perhaps Mr. Uh, Newsom would like to respond to that. And don't go away, please. Mr. Newsom? Uh, Mr. You Newsom. Go ahead. To, through you, Council I beg your Chair. pardon, Mr. Chair. To, to you, Mr. I'm glad y'all are begging my pardon, because you know I get moody and won't call folks up. Proceed. Thank you. Now, uh, could you please repeat your question? It has been said, in fact, Mr. Benzik was quoted in the newspaper as saying, but I remember him saying this, and it's been said in there that you and Rob Benzik had some agreement with AECOM that they would go beyond uh, 6,000. They would do an additional 2,000 excavations. First of all, they've not fulfilled the contract because the contract says 6,000 lead line replacements. It doesn't say 6,000 excavations. So if you told them to go beyond 2,000, clearly you didn't follow our own purchasing ordinance because there was, if that's a contract modification, scope of work or some additional, that has to come before council for approval. And you did not bring this before council. No, Ms. Fields, we're in front of you tonight. And so just so you under, I, Ms., I'll let Mr. Benzik speak to what, he, what was said in the media. I can't speak to that, but I can say that they continue to work. Remember that there's not just a purchasing ordinance, but there's also the settlement, which means that this, which said that the city had to hit 18,000 lines. We did not want to stop work uh, during the construction season, so they continue to go forward. But let me remind you of this. If I had bought, and Mr. Moss and I have had many discussions on this, if we had bought the cost that was originally uh, suggested to you all, then we wouldn't, I, I could not, we did not agree with what that cost was. So we are adhering to the purchasing ordinance because we are bringing that to you. The problem is we still needed to discuss and negotiate what those costs were. Did you want me to bring you 2.4 million? You can't bring this to us after the fact. If you make that agreement, Mr. that's a modification. Told you, Mr. Moss has already told you that he knew that he was working at risk. That's what at risk means. I've made my point about the purchasing ordinance and any change order that needs to be brought, modification of contract to council. That's all, Mr. Newsom. But I want to get back to the 6,000. You know, you said you didn't know about the predictive model. That's you, not what I said, ma'am. You, you said it wasn't brought to you. I, you know, I said I it was not in my scope is what I said, if you all would right. be clear. Okay, that's one thing. And so let's make sure that we, we stay in line with each other, I, with all due respect. I well, said I don't that mind it, doing that, but I would appreciate if you would be actually accurate instead of and, and it changing is, no, the situation. We have not point of that is accurate, ma'am. What's your point? Hold on, everybody. What's that your point? That is very point? accurate. Mr. Hold on, Mr. Moss. Yes, sir. What's your point, Councilman Dave? I don't know how accurate this point is, but it's just short of slandering of what I'm hearing of two colleagues of mine, very disrespectful, and this is not pertinent. Okay. I got and I'm done. So as your inquiry is, can we kind of be a little more respectful to each other? Proceed, Ms. Fields. Back to the actual documents, what's actually written at a certain point in time, okay? 
I've handed this out to my, and I've sent it ahead of time to my colleagues, okay? The most accurate appraisal of what went on regarding attempts to contact AECOM and uh, the city and a is by Dr. Schwartz. Once again, he made numerous, numerous attempts once this change from McDaniel's oversight to AECOM to contact you, to offer to work with you. I, I mean, if you read this declaration and, and you're trying to claim that you weren't aware of it or you didn't think you should do it or, you know, because basically what happened was when you stopped using the predictive model, which had a success rate of finding lead lines, which is the point of all this. The point of all this is not to dig as many holes in the city as you possibly can. The point of it is to remove and replace lead and galvanized service lines. And we agree with that. Well, and, you're and certainly, going, your actions, well, don't interrupt me. Ms. Fields, how many minutes you got left? I don't know how many minutes do I have left on this question. Pro proceed. You got the five minute route. I'm being lenient. Proceed. You've been made well aware of the difference between whatever random thing you were using. Pardon me, ma'am. I, please don't interrupt me. You once, know, I'll once, you, you Ms. once Ms. you're Fields, rude to Ms. me. Fields, hold up, Ms. Mr. Moss. Hold okay. up. Ms. Fields, when he interrupts you, it stops your time. That might be a good thing, <laughs> but you and him, I'm just going to let y'all operate. You tell him not to interrupt. I ain't going to say nothing, but whatever y'all do, I'm going to watch it for five minutes more, and then we'll get there. Proceed, Ms. Fields. The fact is, anyone who can read can read this declaration and see how many attempts were made to contact AECOM to talk about this because the fact is, whatever AECOM started doing, okay, it was clear that you were not having a success hit rate of finding lead lines. Instead, you were basically uh, instructing contractors to go dig up what is predicted to be copper lines. And when uh, Dr. Schwartz comes up and shows this map again, that's exactly what happened. And under the, using the predictive model provided by Dr. Schwartz and Abernathy, et cetera, there was a 94% success rate. Using whatever methodology you were using, it was under 20%, 16%, I believe. And in fact, I found very interesting in this, the two wards that they compared were the fifth ward, um, and the fourth ward. And the fourth ward that I represent had the lowest predictive lead lines possible. And that's where you seem to have done a lot of your work this past year, which is, just makes no sense. It is indefensible that you are directing contractors to dig where it's predicted there are not lead lines. And in fact, the predictions have been found to be true. There are no lead lines. There are copper lines where it's predicted yet you are ignoring those areas that are predicted to have lead lines. We're not ignoring anything. I, I mean, it's indefensible, Mr. Moss. It is just indefensible. And the fact that you have not met the, uh, the contract mm -hmm. agreements, oh, we have. which clearly says, I mean, I've marked them, I've highlighted them, lead line replacements, not excavations. It goes back and forth between excavations and replacements. But this is, for some reason, for some reason, you want us to have discussion with the U of M predictive model. Our modeling people and them can have all the discussions you'd want. I'm fine with that. It's a little bit more than discussion. It's like actually use the, statis the statistical I, predictive model I, again, that I will find you, lead lines I, because again, that is the point of all this. That's why you have this big contract. We are not paying you to dig holes. We are paying you to replace lead lines. And, and we're not, we're not and asking you to do how that. could you not be aware of it? I mean, and I make copies of these for my, for my colleagues everywhere. Every dang letter we've gotten from the state, and here's one from the uh, National Defense Fund, okay, that's actually paid for the pastor's settlement. Their litigators are helped doing this with the ACLU. They've 
They've all been saying, are you not getting copies of these communications? Does the city not provide you with copies of all these communications about the use of predictive line, uh, models and Again, the number of I, lines Again, I've replaced? said this to you maybe three or four times. I have no, we have no opposition in including that. If, in fact, you want that in our scope of work, we're open for that. I'm through for the moment. Mr. Griggs. Um, I looked at some of the background on uh, your request for more money. Uh, part of it, a pretty substantial part, is an increase in the number of inspectors. Uh, what caused that? What is causing more inspectors? That you need more inspectors. I would believe, in terms of that, is because we're doing more work at a faster pace. We have how many contractors do we have in the field? Five? How many, how many general contractors? Five? We have five teams in the field. We want to make sure that what they're doing, we can inspect and make sure that it's performed properly. Uh, when hydrovacuum was eliminated, that made you go faster? No, sir. I think what it does, and under the predictive model that we keep talking about, <clears throat> it also allows us to look and see if, in fact, there's splices or it may look copper to copper in the hydrovac, but you go down to the main or the public area, there could have been a copper splice. If we open it up, that way we can see everything that is, that is basically in the, in the domain. Okay, you're, in other words, make, dig a bigger hole. Well, basically look to make sure that there is no lead service. There, there is no lead, correct. And that requires more inspectors. Well, you have more work being done, yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh, Ms. Wheeler and then Ms. Worthing. Before we get too far into this, is that the city is already working with the NRDC to use Dr. Schwartz and Dr. Abernathy's model to set things up for next year. We've had these conversations and all that, and, and I think it's because perhaps you're not on the ground with this, you know, the, the council. It doesn't, it doesn't really realize that because we have to, to work through things. And I really would like Councilwoman Fields and Councilman Worthing to also be aware of this information too because you guys need to know that we are working with them to use the predictive modeling as we go into next year. And, and I just want to make sure that, that everyone here knows that um, because, like I said, we're, we're, we're better together than we are apart. And, and I think that that's what the public needs to know, is that we are getting all of the best information that we can to work through our contractors, um, through AECOM, so that we can do everything that we can to put that together for next year. So, um, like I said, we are working with the NRDC, with Dr. Abernathy, with Dr. Schwartz, so that we can have the best methods available as we go into the next phase of this project. Is that all? Okay, I'm gonna go with Ms. Worthing, then back to Ms. Fields. I want to address what Ms. Wheeler just said um, because the city already knew about uh, the predictive model and had used it the year before. So I don't understand why we had to waste a year and then now we're all going to work together after there's letters from like three different entities that I've already mentioned, the NRDC, the state, multiple letters from the state and uh, the concerned pastors. Uh, and according to the declaration of Eric Schwartz, he had definitely communicated about the predictive model. Um, and 
I want to know why Alan Wong testified in court that he had no knowledge of the predictive model, because now you're saying that you did, but you no. just decided not to use it? No, that's not what I said. What, please understand. I said the predictive model was never part of our scope of services. That's what I said, okay? I've not changed that. I don't know what No, you, you haven't. I Mr. Wong testified in no, court. No, I don't know what Mr. Wong testified because I was not there. Okay, but, but I can tell you okay, that he did fine. testify that. Well, that's what you're saying. I, I don't know that. But what I do know, as I've said to you maybe 12 times now, Madam Counsel, <coughs> Councilwoman, if in fact that model was that important to your city, not to ACOM, to your city, it would have been in first the RFP, and it wasn't. Second, it would have been into our scope of work, or it would have been negotiated as part of our scope. What you're asking me to do is void our, our, our contract. And I'm saying to you, if in fact, yes, that's what you're asking me to do. I'm sorry, and can so, I? Pardon me, and so I'm saying, if in fact you want to amend it and bring it to us, we're open for that. Actually, I think when we hired uh, you, AECOM, for $5 mm -hmm. million, dollars, we assumed. No, man, there's no assumptions in the scope of work. Because we can't make assumptions because that takes risk. I'm sorry. Let me correct you right there. There are only facts. That's all we can deal with. No assumptions, man. Okay. So I would think that you would continue with the predictive model given that it has a 94%. I, I, well, can I please finish, Ms. Mr. Moss? Mr. Moss, can we, Ms. Worthing, you have the floor. You guys just not go back and forth right now. Ask your questions, then you can answer. Please, thank you. Um, <laughs> Mr. Uh, Schwartz communicated on, um, he had communicated with the city of Flint since last year, continuously. It stopped when AECOM came on board. So he had communicated and it starts on the declaration of Eric Schwartz on page seven, paragraph 18 and 19. Our regular communications with the city largely ended when the city hired AECOM to oversee the Fast Start program. On December 4th, 2017, Dr. Abernathy and I spoke with officials from AECOM, the Fast Start program, and MDEQ to explain our collaboration with the Fast Start program and make plans for 2018. I had several follow-up communications with AECOM throughout that month. We provided AECOM staff with detailed information about our predictive model, including a link to our paper, and the estimated cost savings from using our model and proposed approach. We also provided AECOM with an interactive map of up-to-date uh, up data on the composition of service lines discovered through hydro excavations and service line replacements completed during 2016 and 2017. So I guess you are saying it wasn't in the contract, but you were given information and we paid you $5 million. And with the information that had a 94% success rate, you chose to not use it. No, ma'am, it's not in my contract. I, I had no right to use it. No, that, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I don't believe what you're saying right now. Part of your contract was to replace your contract was to replace 6,000 lead lines, which you have not done. That. And you, re you chose not to use it because it wasn't written in the contract. Is that not best practice? Don't we hire in our contracts best practice? How come the state and NRDC and the pastors, there's a lawsuit, um, how come we have gotten letter after letter what saying the you have chosen what not is, to what use is the best pastor's practice? Lawsuit. You let her finish her statement. And I'm sorry. Answer. The pastor's lawsuit talks about excavations, right? Is that not what it says? No, it is lead service line replacements. I think you need to read that. Can I, can In I any case, no, man, we hired case, you. If we're going to argue points, let's argue points. Okay, it's I will. It's excavations, and that's what we're... Your okay. contract says 6,000 lead line service replacements. And there's times it says excavations. Let, let me say this to you so that we can get by this. If in fact, as we move forward, if in fact the model is, is, is asked of us to look at the next round, we will do that. 
Well, I personally I, I've, I've would, that, would not be asking you to do that if you fine. could not choose to do that on your that's, own as a $5 million contract. Uh, I personally it's, it's cannot. Right. Um, I have one more thing. Um, is it true that AECOM uh, has contributed over $9,000 to the Mayor Weaver campaign? Uh, AECOM or yes. individuals? Yes, AECOM, employees of AECOM. Have they contributed over $9,000 to the Mayor Weaver campaign? I don't know how much individuals may have contributed, okay? I know that AECOM, I don't believe that our PAC has written any contracts for AECOM. Have we, Patrick? We have to check. We corporately, we can't. We'd have to, we can't, not corporately. It, has individuals contributed? I would have to look and see. I have the documents with me, and it's been passed out but, to but council. I'm, my question to you is in, by, uh, in terms of supporting candidates for mayor or council. What does that have to do with my contract? I'm going to explain that. Oh, okay. okay. Mr. Ms. Worthing, can you make it relevant? And then can we not have this back and forth until after her comments are done? Well, I would say that this is absolutely relevant. Uh, the the $9,000 in contributions were made by AECOM uh, and AECOM um, contractors at, like ARCO, Sam Cox. And that's only two quarters of data that we have. We don't have the most recent data lately. Um, but it is not illegal to make contributions. However, point of it, information. Mr. Chair, how far are you going to let her get off scope of what the conversation should be? Again, this is completely relevant. Uh, <laughs> the, co the contributions. Point of information. Um, Mr. Chair, how is that relevant? I'm trying. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think contributions, donations, or whatever you're talking about, I don't think that's relevant to the scope of this meeting. I, let's, stay, let's stay focused, please. Uh, let me give you an example. So on the federal level, uh, f the Food and Drug Administration um, gives, or the FDA gives, my, or no, I'm sorry, no. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, not the FDA. But like drug companies will give uh, members of Congress money for their campaign or say the National Rifle Association. And then that member of Congress will vote for the National Rifles Association, and that's why we have killings and mass murderers all the time, is because they're bought and paid for. So, Ms. in this case, you're far, you're, Ms. Worthing, I'm giving an example of relevancy. She asked. Ms. <laughs> Ms. Worthing, that was a, a little off so, topic. So, $9,000 was given is an appearance of pay to play. And yeah, also, I take offense to that. I take offense to right, that. Guys, 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 we're not going to go on this route. We're going we're gonna to say it's past the five minutes. Point we're of not information. Gonna get and then, Ms. Fields, what's your point? Is this council aware that the last two quarters, contractors involved in AECOM, subcontractors, lead line replacement contractors, and restoration contracts, they have contributed $35,470 to the mayor's campaign? And you're trying to That's not a point of information. No, That's taking the no floor. There is no relevant connection. Point, point taken, Ms. Fields. Okay. We're, let's. I'm sorry that let's. this is uncomfortable for you. No, ma'am. I'm very comfortable. Uh, the with reason, the I'm reason, sorry it's uncomfortable. Hold on, hold on, guys, guys. The reason I feel very comfortable. <laughs> okay. You too. Good. <laughs> The back and forth arguing is what's, is, is what's causing the issues here. It well, sir, I, I would ask content. that we so, stay with facts. So can we, can we continue to Those talk? Those were facts. She, what she, I have the, so I We're going to go right back here. to these, this, I, I, I agree. I see where you're coming from with your point. I do see your perspective on a, a contract in regards to donations. Mr. Okay, Chairman. We're going to go back to Mr. Davis. Davis in regards to his question on the contract and then in closing comments and our comments afterwards. Feel free to say what you want to say. Mr. Davis, as you're talking on this. I have the floor, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Moss, yes, sir. I'd like to personally apologize for the insults that was hurled your way from my two colleagues. Seemed like they did an excellent job of their homework for whatever it was or whatever the purpose, whatever intent to cause a division. At this time, this city don't need no more of that. 
They act like they should be the ones with the shovels and the contracts, the way they did their homework to create some kind of division. But let me tell you like this. What y'all doing is an excellent job, and I, and I really applaud you to how you stand firm on stating facts. Thank not you, assumptions and not hearsay. My colleagues, for some reason, they're getting bad information behind the scenes to try to throw a, a negative light on what we need for this city to move forward. I'm glad AECOM is on board and the rest of the, the workers that y'all encompass in, to move this city forward. This never happened before in a community. And I applaud you, but it's very embarrassing for the other contractors might be looking over the internet or however the means are to see how hard it is to get along with this body. This is very unprofessional and somebody should have stopped it a long time ago before it even started. They should no way be sitting up here hurling these kind of insults to a professional company that's worldwide and came in a setting where it has never been done changing pipes in the setting that we in, this have never happened before. So a lot of things we have to do off the cuff, but with that said, even with the professor sitting behind you, everybody in this unit is on one accord, including with that predictive model, including the professor I spoke with. In some kind of way, this here, the two colleagues up here, they hell bent on causing a division. They hell bent on using a the predictive model that wasn't introduced in the beginning. And I don't know why they sitting here, whatever their hidden agenda is, is very embarrassing to me if nobody else. And I really applaud you how you stand fast to the facts and your integrity. integrity. Because this is very unprofessional what you're going through right now, and I am done. Ms. Fields. Ms. Fields. Uh, I'd like to say that um, basically it's a very professional to bring and refer to contracts, official documents from litigation, uh, everything we're talking about, the lead replacement, and the, what I've been presenting are facts. What you presented are not facts. So um, I would like to make a referral to Mr. Benzik and Mr. Newsom. I would like a written copy of whatever it is that you supposedly changed the scope of or the tasks, or whatever, any documentation you have in writing of what was given to AECOM so that they thought they could move beyond 6,000 lead line replacements. And I'd also like to say that- Let me take it one at a time, Ms. Fields. Okay. She's asking it as if there's any written documentation to change the scope of the original contract. I would ask that we have it maybe by special affairs if it is such a written communication, then I would order that without objections if it's such a document. Proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I would like to hear from Professor Schwartz and so everybody can see this map again, but I will say in response to uh, Councilman Davis, oh, I'm hell-bent on one thing. I'm hell-bent on getting lead lines replaced in the city of Flint. I think, we, I, I think today that's the only thing you and I probably agree on. Well, then your actions need to demonstrate that. That's but all. if your rudeness would change, our actions would be the same, man. We, I've told you over and over again, we've done what we were contracted to do. And we will continue to do that. I don't know what your problem is. Our firm is one of the best firms. Pardon me, ma'am. Our firm is one of the best firms in the world. We I come here. Ms. Fields, Ms. Fields, well, it, it is whatever you Ms. say, Fields. okay? Now, you know I've I'm said being this. cool. Hold up. Ms. Fields, when I, you... I'm done, Mr. Hey, Chair. But I, yes, that's okay are. with you done. But the thing is, I'm, when I chair, you know, I'm from the old school. You can shoot at them. I'm going to let them shoot back. Continue, Mr. Moss. I, I, we are on accord. And I said this to you again, as I said to your colleague. If the Michigan model is one that wants to... That, that the city, my client... The administration wants to put in our scope. We're open for that. We, we relish to work with them. The other thing is we get approached numerous times on every project we've done around the world by a lot of different universities, consultants, advocates about a lot of things. To me, it does not exist unless my client puts it in the RFP or negotiates it with me. 
Other than that, I stand fast with where I am. And it's been a pleasure talking to you. Ms. Fields, are you done? I would like to hear from uh, Professor Schwartz. Yeah, we got him set up. Um, I got Mr. Guerra and the city attorney, and then Mr. Griggs, I see you. This is interesting. Y'all yeah, ain't heard from me yet. What am I going to say? But anyway, <laughs> you're going to go Mr. Guerra and then the city attorney, then Mr. Griggs, unless we want to go before the city attorney. It's up to you. You're a council person. But right now, Guerra, and then we'll take it from there. We'll get you in, ma'am. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Guerra. Can you get a mic? Yes, yeah. Did U of M um, contact you about their predictive model? Contact the, yeah, me? Yeah, the university contact AECOM about the predictive model, to so, your knowledge. It's just yes. I don't know. Don't I, can't, know. Okay. I can't say yes, I can't say Let no. Let me do this. What anybody I can in do. The, anybody in the room know, uh, Mr. Thorpe, anybody from AECOM know, had professor that you contact, contact somebody from AECOM? Yes, sir. Who? I had a meeting in this building on December 4th, 2017. Okay, you'll be talking in a minute. Proceed, Mr. Garrett. Can you say who you met with? Sure, several, several people. From AECOM? Let, 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 let me okay. bring a point of order. We weren't <laughs> under contract it's December 4th, sir. December 4th of? We weren't under contract. 2017 in the transition meeting with General McDaniel. Yeah, see, that's a, we got it, we got it. But, you know, hey. I'm not going to let you call a point of order and you ain't got no voting status, but I hear you. Go ahead, Mr. Gary. You okay. got me, man. Yeah, I'm a, you, y'all help me watch this. No, I'm just kidding. Right, thank, you, thank you for that answer. And if anybody from AECOM would like to respond, if they were in that meeting as well, I would just like to know who was there from AECOM, if they're here. Nobody. Those meetings occurred as a courtesy. I understand that. I just want to know if, if, if they had reached out to AECOM before, after, and, during and the contract. And what we also did... Let me address something. Through our transition, certain members of staff that work for the general, we brought them under AECOM so that we could look at continuity and collaboration. We did that, okay? And, and I, I bring this point back to you. If in fact, I say this one more time, sir. If in fact, through all of those meetings, if his model was of interest to my client, it would have been, an, it would have been amended to my scope. And let me say this for the, the record, because of all the time spent on this, remember, we the counsel. When contracts come before us, whether it's 5.5 million for AECOM or whether it's 11 million for W.T. Stevens or 6 million for Goyette, before we vote, if we want things in the scope, that's the time. So we got leverage and pool. When they say the city is the client, the administration is part of the city and the council is part of the city. If we are honest here, we voted and gave them 5.5 million, some of us, and it wasn't an issue. Now it's an issue. And if we want the predictive model and the scope of contracts, that'll be a time in the future. He's saying he's going to do whatever the client contract out to do. So just so you know, continue, Mr. Gear. All right. So also in regards to uh, your task order number two, which has been brought up several times, which is the plan to manage the removal of at least 6,000 lead lines, service lines. You're saying that it was included with exca excavations and stuff like that as well. But I, what I have seen from pointed out to me, was it, did, it said service lines. So I'm asking why you're here, if you could point out where it says what you're saying, just so we can kind of all be clear on can, that fact. Can you help me, uh, Patrick, on that? And you want to use this? Can you give us a moment? Yeah. I know I've read those ones. I just want to know if he can prove while he's here what he's saying is correct. Because what you're, I, I've read that it's, I did not read what he said. So I, I just want to hear, I want to hear it from him where it says that he. So he, you know they're serious and people serious when they say, can you give us a moment? I see that all the time. Can you give us a moment? So that means we're serious. Mr. Mr. Hicks, come holler at me if you will. Can you find Come holler at me. Can you find what he says and then what he says? 
<laughs> On page 2.6 of our contract. You give me a second to get to that. contract I have doesn't have a 2.6. Isn't it an attachment, A, B, C, D? It's part of the best and final offer, the BAFO. Um, I think it's in the front. Uh, the assumption? Just a moment. 2.6, public relation, wait, let's No, ma'am. Completion? No, ma'am. Task seven. Schedule, task seven, completion, schedule, budget estimates, assumptions. This is what we assume. Assume 6,000 excavations can be completed in six months by four contractor crews. That's item number five. Item number two, 1,000 meters targeted after hydrovac exploration, but you took metering out of my contract. But it goes back and forth, basically, between excavations, replacement, assumptions. But it, we've always been driven by is the concerned pastors, consent decree order. And that talks about excavations. <clears throat> and so I, you know, I can only do what we can do. <laughs> Can, no. can, you, can you show me that? Can you bring that up here and show it to me? Because I'm not finding it on this counter. Five million dollars. You can only do. Well, this is a committee meeting. All the work VO gets done in committee meeting. So this is a committee meeting. The only problem is <coughs> I'm a bad chairman because I could cut stuff off after five minutes, but I'm a you know, I, I played down. Ain't no objections. I'm trying to do something. Mr. Chair. <coughs> um, hold on a minute, Ms. Fields. If, if it's a quick inquiry, well, he got the floor. What's going on? It is a quick inquiry. What's going on? I would like to ask AECOM if anyone <coughs> in the city directed them to use some <coughs> way of figuring out where they were going to dig. If somebody in the city instructed them on some other method or some other way they wanted them to use other than the predictability. Okay, method. we'll get there. Mr. Day, Mr. Gary, you got the floor. Okay, so then my, my question comes to, uh, if it says, it says one thing and the other thing, which one is to be taken more? Because if one does say service line replacements and the other one says explorations, and then earlier you said that you don't assume when you're talking to Ms. Worthing, but then that That's line correct. says assumption. But so assumptions I'm just trying to throw it off. Those assumptions were made as part of the contract. Okay. I said I can't make oral assumptions. That's what I'm saying. Those are, and there are assumptions in contract. That's the contract. Okay. And so what has always driven this is been the concerned <coughs> pastors. That's what's driven what we've been doing. Okay. And meeting those obligations, which not only have we met, we're continuing to meet and, and we're exceeding. Okay, and then uh, when did you when a when did AECOM reach these six thousand expirations? What what date was when was the date for that? I I I I would have to look. I think it was in or around no. September. It September around September fifteenth. September fifteenth. And then okay, and then uh, who was notified? Was it just the administration? Was it just? Was there a specific person that you kind of notified in regards once they hit that 6,000? We, we, work, we work daily with city staff. Okay. Daily. We, who, we who work. Was it? What office or what department? Just for. We work with the closed. Department of Public Works, sir. Okay. So, Rob, that's as, as, as a matter of fact, we also <laughs> advise your street department because they have been responsible for, for restorations. And the way the city works, you got Rob Benzik, you got uh, Mr. Gilchrist, you got the mayor. The mayor is where the buck stops at. If Steve say something, Steve Branch or Rob say something, if the mayor ain't cool with it, it probably ain't gonna happen. So I bet you it was more than one person making the decision, but when a decision is made, unless you hear the mayor say, I didn't do it, it's the mayor and her staff. But um, um, we will find out 
Mr. Garrett, if that's what you and others want to know. Who and how many make decisions? It's going to be relevant or irrelevant, but where we're going to be at is paying folks and moving forward in some kind of way. I'm sorry I got carried away. I'm letting everybody get carried away. Continue, <coughs> Mr. Garrett. And what, what would you say, how would you determine where you're doing the work currently um, with digs and excavation and dirt in different areas and zones? Who, who decides or what are you determining what, to use what, that? What has been missed today since we started is we created our own model. We had certain basic critical data that we looked at. We looked at addresses. We looked at hot spots. We, 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 we have about, what is it, about 100, well, it's probably about 50. Mr. Thorpe, can you approach the podium, please? You know, I'm making you work and get up. And Ed, Ed Thorpe. Ed uh, Thorpe. Uh, uh, what's your position with AECOM? I'm project manager. Okay, proceed. At the financial committee hearing, uh, whenever it was, two or three weeks ago, when AECOM presented, they presented a flow chart on the screen, and I think you got copies of it, that showed all of that information that we utilized to try to determine where the most likely spots for lead were located. So that is something that you have already seen and it's in your documentation. And using that information is how you target where you're doing the work. So could you say that? Using that information is what you're saying, how you target where you're going to be digging that and send correct. the crews out. And, and that's the what the RFP asked. The RFP prescribed that we create our own model. That's what it, I mean, that's what your document prescribed. And so we've done that. Okay, we've not tried to change any magic or hocus pocus underground. We can't do that. What we can do, though, is look at what was presented to us in terms of the 10 zones. And then from our model and data that your city has, we looked at that in our best practices. We looked at that so that we could, in fact, dictate how we would attack this, and that's what we've done. And not only did we do that, we did it very, in a very expedited manner with local contractors here and worked with them as well as the city to come up with, with where we are today. So do you guys have an estimated number of lead galvanized lines left in the city of Flint? He asked us that we have, a, we have an estimate on how many galvanized, galvanized lines or, or lead service lines, I would guess you said. Yeah. That are left. Anything along that line would strictly be speculation because nobody knows what they are until they're actually excavated and dug up. So if we were to speculate, how many would I speculate? How many would you speculate? Have y'all got any speculation numbers? We, that's not the business we're in, sir. Okay, I'm gonna speculate. Okay. I'm gonna speculate. If you had 31,000 customers at one time and you didn't did 18,000 so far, excavation, 7,000 or so lead lines, 18 from 31, I think, turns out to 13,000. Half of 13,000 is six. Um, so I'm gonna predict it could be anywhere from three to 10,000, and that's the best I'm gonna do. Y'all thought I was gonna really do something scientific. Well, I did that, and Mr. Garrett proceed. So just to be clear, you don't have a number that you would like to say I'm not about. going, I, that's so, not what we do, sir. Okay, all right, because uh, the, only the reason I bring that up is because if you look at the predictive model, it's a speculation you can assume. So I was wondering if your guys' modeling has something similar to that, since you did your own, but you don't want to say the number, that's okay. Uh, and you, would you say where these are, areas are located? Do you know if there's a certain area that has more high lead levels than others? Or by the way, you guys use your data or no? If, if in fact we, we knew that, if in fact that, that assumption was a reality, that's where we would have been. Okay. And then, uh, so quickly I wanna to touch on the hydro, hydro vacuum um, in regards to being used as a tool. Um, is there a reason that AECOM 
would not want to see that used as a tool for, for example, I think it was W.T. Stevens and Goyette that use it as a tool to dig the 10 feet? I think what we found out with hydrovacuum, and I think I said this to one of your colleagues, hydrovacuum is, is very relative to a very specific area. However, because of the age of some of your homes and there were no as-built conditions, if there was as-built conditions, then we could have looked at that small area. No, no, no you misunderstood Will me. You, let me you misunderstood me, though, because okay. you're talking about, I understand that was um, Ms. Martha Brown doing the small hole. I, I, don't, I don't think that was right because there could be splice lines that we could have been missing. That I is totally correct. agree with you. What I'm asking is it being used as a tool to dig the 10 feet or whatever parameters that we have so they can, don't have to dig it by uh, hand and or uh, machine. Are you, is AE kind of against the use of it that way? I understand you're what you're asking me said. about construction methods. Yes. That's what you're asking yes. me about. It, come talk to him about construction methods, please. Mike, come, come ask. Come answer this. In looking at the specifications that were written for the phase five uh, service line replacements and explorations, the specifications call for hand excavation or machine excavation uh, for the hole, and then hand excavation as it gets close to utilities. That is what is written in the specifications, and that's what we would expect the contractors to do. So you're saying that they could use a hydrovac machine up until the point where they're almost by the lead line, and then or use the shovel the rest of the way? Is that what you just said? I'm, I'm confused on why they can't, why you're saying. Because they're within the specs, unless the specs change for hydro vacuum, our specs were very specific for what the contractor should do. That's what my colleague just answered your question with. And so if I was to interpret that, my position, we all know I don't hide it. I'm an advocate of hydro vacuum. And so once again, once we approve or deny contracts, we can then decide what we approve and deny as it relates to a contract with or without hydrovac. And so I'm just wanting to keep it in perspective. Whatever answer they give, because see, I give answers sometimes. And the answers I give, it, you can read it either way you want. So they said a machine, which is a hydrovac, when it get close to the utility hand. So the answer was yes. It was in there, you can use them. We know the answer. The position is, where do I stand? I'm an advocate of the use of hydrovac. I think a little different than the order to see some. We'll get there. I can keep that separate from whether I'm gonna get him 1.1 million because I'm gonna have a lot to say about contracts that's gonna come to me for approval. Proceed, Mr. Gear. I, I get carried away. That's all the questions I had at this time. Okay, Mr. Griggs, I still know you, you, you got it. All right, Mr. Griggs. Um, you go ahead. Uh, Professor, after this round, I'm gonna cut it off and go to you, and then we gonna end up voting here shortly. Uh, Mr. Griggs, I'm sorry. A, a bit of confusion on this model, you know, to model or not to model. Uh, in a letter, sent to us by the uh, State Attorney General on November 1. Under the section, it says, Flint's failure to look for lead and galvanized steel service lines. Then it says, during 2016 and 17, the city used available information and predictive modeling to identify lead or galvanized service line and focus its excavation on those areas. Is this a true statement? Does anybody know? Did we really use this modeling? Say that again. Let's Did ask the really question. Did we really use the, math, the modeling? The predictive modeling? The, the state attorney general said we did. And you say, do anybody in here know? Do the yeah. professor know? Well, you got a mic. You know the answer, professors. Chime in. Stick with your microphone. It has to be up. Push again. There you go. You can pull it over to your chair. Yes, sir. Uh, Councilman over. Mays. Uh, Councilman Griggs. I, uh, I presented here 
I stood at that podium in September 2016 and discussed my plans with my colleague Jacob Abernathy when uh, General McDaniel yielded his time to me. I discussed the plans in September 2016 and then throughout two, late 2016, throughout 2017, we worked closely with General McDaniel's Fast Start team and the city uh, administration through the Fast Start team uh, and regularly exchanged data mm -hmm. and predictions and recommended areas to, to dig at. And Mr. Hold up, Mr. Uh, Griggs. When I also testified to that effect in, in court. You're going to get in trouble yeah. when I'm talking and you talking. Sorry, you gonna, sorry. I'm going to take my right hand down. You don't know me yet. I'm going to just trip and you ain't going to do no presentation, but I swore that you would. Mr. Okay. Griggs, let me ask this question. Uh, what year did the new council come on? What November of what year? Uh, 17. 17. So I'm hearing him talk about September, yeah. I mean 16 and 17. Mr. Griggs, proceed. Okay. Now, who, since they did, since the city did use this modeling, who directed the contractors to follow the model? Who directed the contractors to follow the model? Maybe General McDaniels? Yeah. I don't know. Well, somebody... McDaniels. Uh, the General McDaniels, sir, was in charge of the Fast Start team at that point, so he, he and he the, did so. He directed the contractors which homes to go to first. Correct, sir. As, as far as my understanding, sir. Okay, and it was never in their scope, so... Uh, Somehow or another that... Sir, let's not get confused. Let me say this now, though. Hold up, Mr. Moss. Mr. Griggs, let me no, say this you. now. And you're going to proceed. But if I'm right, the addresses that the contractors get now... Listen to me, Rob. Y'all listen. Tell me if I'm right or wrong. The addresses the contractors get now comes from the city to AECOM to contract. I'm going to repeat that. Correct me if I'm wrong. They come from the city to AECOM to the contractors. Rob, don't the city play an initial role on addresses? You say no? I can hear you from there. Yes or no? Um, Rob, come on. I thought you were just going to holl out. Yes or no? If it ain't a yes or no, I want to hear why it ain't. Do the or addresses originate from the city in any kind of way, yes or no? So we provide them with the 28,000, well, at when they started, it was 28,400 active accounts. And then at that point, it's really AECOM's job to direct the contractors where they're going to work. So from the beginning, y'all provided 28 thousand addresses active and got out of the way yes okay proceed mr well, griggs now mr benzik did the did, did was the model being used then i'm not confident that the model's ever been used so the state attorney general i guess got this wrong in the letter of november 1st what did he say mr griggs the state attorney general can you read it into the record yeah during 2016 and 17 the city used available information and predictive modeling to identify lead or galvanized steel service lines and focused its excavations efforts on those on the areas most likely to contain those lines the city's efforts were successful it, conduct, it conducted 8,843 excavations and uncovered 6,356 service lines requiring replacement, which roughly equates to a 71.8% hit rate. Who signed that letter, Mr. Griggs? Uh, Richard Cole, Assistant Attorney General. Okay, yeah, that same guy blocking my subpoenas, but anyway. <laughs> and so, Go and, ahead. And then it says, but, and then it goes on and says, but in 2018, without consulting with the state parties, the city made a policy decision to stop prioritizing excavations at homes where lead or galvanized steel service lines were expected to be found, and to instead dig up every residential service line in the city, roughly 28,400, 
without regard to where lead or galvanized steel lines were likely to be located. We got it. Go back to your and then, questions or do whatever you want to do. Okay, you, and, you got the floor. Keep right, with whatever then, you choose. Okay, and then it ends with the city's new random excavation plan has resulted in the hit rate dropping from over 70% in 2017 to less than 20% in 2018. Uh, if ACOM was directed to use this model, would it, would it speed up the, the progress of the project? I mean, I can't, I can't answer that if, if it would. I think, I guess my opinion is our goal in this project is to find 100% copper. So we've always expected the percentage of copper to increase as we work through the project. Yeah. So when, when the general, and I'm not trying to discredit what the general did, but when the general, uh, Colonel uh, Nick Anderson, uh, Kyle, uh, Sergeant Kyle Bazin, when they worked through all this stuff, they, they, had, they, they took up all the low-hanging fruit, okay? So the percentage that, that they were getting was never going to continue because we, we are, at some point, we're gonna hit 100% copper. We don't know when that's gonna be, yeah. but that is the goal of the project. Okay, well, let me ask of ACOM, do you think if, if you were directed to use this model, do you think it would speed up your progress? So I can't make that assumption. What I can say is if, it's, if we're asked to do that, we will do it. And then yeah. we'll see what the results are. Yeah. Okay? Okay. I think that's reasonable. Okay. I think you might get that chance. We'll see. Miss, um, I see you, Miss Fields and Miss Worthing, but I want to go to the city attorney. And then if y'all tell me otherwise, I'll call on you. But then I want to go to the professor because I like the professor. I like his style, demeanor. I don't want to get on his bad side. Go ahead, <laughs> Ms. Um, Wheeler. Yeah, and I, I think it's just important to re reiterate again our um, continual work and along with AECOM that we've been working through the concern pass for settlement agreement because that's been a lot of what we've had to do throughout that and we're continuing to do that and that's one of the things that um, had conversations with Mr. Tharp as we have we are working let me pull this up as as we are working to get things prioritized for next year is to get a plan together as we are working through NRDC to work with Drs. Schwartz and Drs. Abernathy to, to get this, to get the prioritization. And as was reiterated earlier, like I said, it's not always going to be, um, the probability is going to continue to reduce. That's the whole nature of this is that it's going to continue to reduce, but we want to go to every single house. Um, and like I said, the, the idea is to start with the ones with the highest probability, continue to get the ones with the lowest probability, but again, it's a probability. So you don't know until you do the actual excavation. And in the Concern Pastor Settlement Agreement, that's what it talks about, it talks about in paragraph 20, the city shall replace and let lead and galvanize steel service lines on the following schedule. The schedule speaks to um, in the first year, January, in year one, by January 20 of 2018, the city shall have conducted excavation at a minimum of 6,000 households and complete replacement at those where lead or galvanized steel lines are discovered. That means that you may not find that you have 6,000 um, excavations where there is lead or galvanized steel, but you, if you do, then you do replacements at the ones where there's lead or galvanized steel. Same thing with year two. Um, by January 1 of 19, the city shall have conducted excavations at a minimum of 12,000, which means it's another 6,000, and completed replacements at those households where lead or galvanized steel lines are discovered. And then in year three, by 
January 1 of 2020, the city shall have conducted excavations at a minimum of 18,000 households. And, and then it talks about plus excavations at any households, and there are some other provisions, um, 27, 29, 30, and 33, and, com and re completed replacements at those houses where letter galvanized steel lines are discovered. And that's where we are now is the excess, the, the beyond the 18,000 for the excavations, for the exploration to be done to see what's there. And I've been kind of quiet. I've let my colleagues talk, but believe me, and my colleagues gonna talk again. Y'all remember this, cause when I talk, I don't want no five minute rules, but they get me with that every time. But this is where I'm at. My position is this, only the Lord knows. Only the Lord knows what the weather gonna be. If you sign a contract to do 6,000, 12,000, 18,000, and the Lord come through here with a tornado or a hurricane as we've seen in other areas, only the Lord knows if them contracts gonna be fulfilled. When them folks get to digging, Mr. Luster, can you come up here a minute, Mr. Luster? I wanna, yeah, I wanna introduce y'all to Mr. Lust. I've been talking to him for three years. He ain't gave me some wrong, no wrong information yet. Mr. Luster, introduce yourself and tell him what you do. Uh, I'm V.O. Luster, and I'm the uh, field coordinator for the inspectors for AECOM. I work for ARCO, and we are a subsidiary or affiliated with AECOM, and we're here to get the work done. Basically. Describe the ARCO and the um, inspection operation and how many people and what y'all do well, in this contract. Well, in this contract, we, uh, we typically use anywhere from 30 to 40 inspectors based on the workload. And most recently, our workload increased because um, with the ending of some of the construction in other areas, the contractors that we have on board have brung, brought crews in from the other areas. So typically we do in the neighborhood of 100 to 150 excavations and explorations on a daily basis. And, you know, based on the weather, of course, and we try to get in the field by 7.30 and out of the field by 5. And 7.30 you know, in the rare. morning and out. What do these... Um what do these inspectors make an hour? Do you have any idea? Any inspectors in here know what y'all make about an hour? Yeah. I never asked them, but okay, I, well, but they come uh, to work every day, so I assume you they make more than they do. I don't know. I don't know, I don't what they know get neither. Paid. So <laughs> somebody tell me what an inspector makes an hour about. I have no idea. Is anybody in here management? Don't nobody know, Mr. Cox. How much inspector make an hour about? Okay. okay, about 20 some. I want to be an inspector too, Quincy. And I meant to tell you, Mr. Woodson, like you were saying with Mr. Uh, Griggs, the mic. I'm just kidding. You can holler that out. I ain't going to be tripping. But um, this is my point. 30 people, $20 an hour. Mr. Moss referred to in the committee room that there was a million dollars put back in the community. You got to look at the folks I look at. When we start delivering water and the state was doing it, we fought the mayor champion. Did she say, I want to let Flint people get jobs? So this is some Flint folks getting some jobs. I wanted Mr. Luster to put in for the deputy public works and he's kept working with this and let the deputy public works application go. Tell them your background, Mr. Luster. What did uh, you do and hold a position? Was it in Ben Harp? Oh yeah, well, I've done multiple municipal. Uh, what was that position in Ben Harbor? That position in, ben, in Ben Harbor was basically the same here. Uh, we were, really uh, I was, my task in Ben Harbor was, well, when I got to Ben Harbor, we had a 60% leakage rate. And That's the goal cool. was to get it down because we were under mandate to get You're it down. What was the position, Mr. Lust? The position was I ran the distribution systems and the wastewater and the water treatment systems. And now, when it comes to the inspectors, describe what they do when they go out to a job or a hole. 
you well, know what we, know we typically do on a daily basis uh, is, first of all, we have a tablet, and in that tablet, uh, well, let me say this. Let me, let me, let me back up a little bit, because just because you see 30 inspectors, there, there's another 30 people working to get us where we are. Those tablets are low with some of the most sophisticated data in this industry, and that's done by the team behind us in different offices around the country, and they supply us with the data and in that data, we go through and we systematically, every day, same is routine, we systematically go through a, a, a form, if you will, that, and in that form, it's, uh, we have specific points of interest that are required by the entities uh, involved, city, well, in the city included. And what we do is uh, we, we try to get the most accurate data that we can get with the uh, tools that we have. Mr. Lester, would you say you help manage the group of inspectors? Is that a fair statement or is it not? Well, that's definitely fair because if, if we don't manage them, they get, you know, it's like herding cats. <laughs> uh, Mr. Benzie, can you come for a minute? Mr. Benzie, I noticed when Ms. Diggs is called, that you got look like don't don't y'all can jump on me if I'm wrong because I could be colorblind. But when Miss Diggs is called, you got some different color flats. Some of them mark the you the utility like maybe AT and T. Some of them mark gas lines and some of them mark water lines. In my opinion, how many people we got for the city marking water lines and can we use more? I did, that ain't an opinion. I'm throwing you off with that talk. I was going to give an opinion, but I switched in the middle of the gear. And my, my question, how many people have we got marking water lines? Have we been able to keep up in phase five and could we use more city workers or who should mark water lines? Well, Mr. Newsom's not going to like me saying this, but we could always use more city I workers. know Mr. Newsom don't like you saying <laughs> it. He might not like me asking it, but my point is this to the council. I don't think water lines been marked accurately in phase five. I don't think the city didn't had enough personnel to keep up. And I don't like Mr. Newsom or nobody in the administration making Mr. Benzik not feel comfortable saying, we need a million or two more dollars to keep up on the city side. I know more about what is and ain't been going on out in the field. And I'm telling you, if we would need a whole department to keep up with the paperwork, the management, the technical expertise, so I'm not gonna sit and argue too long for $1.1 million to run a department. In fact, that's what AECOM is. They are a separate department with a bunch of personnel. I don't know if they made a million dollar profit, two million, 1.5 million, but whatever it is, it was probably a profit. We don't work for free in America. We're in a capitalistic society, but I'm looking at money being spent with Flint folks. Now, I kind of got off track and Mr. Luster and Mr. Benzik, excuse me, but that's what I do. Now watch what I'm gonna do. Mr. Um, <laughs> Professor, I said with my right hand raised that I'm gonna let you do it, but I didn't say how. Excuse me, Mr. Chair. So, hold up, Ms. Field. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get to you, and you've seen my style. I'm a softy, but I'm gonna direct the ship. So let's see how long your presentation um, go. Mr. V.O. Luster, Mr. Benzik, y'all might be back. Um, you excuse, what is it, Ms. Fields? Um, we actually had two more council members that oh, I know you before did. before you got to Mr. And Schwartz. I'll allow that, but you know what I'm doing, Ms. Fields. The rules of twice, five minutes, I don't want to argue about it. I ain't enforcing them. But I got to get to the professor. Your point is well taken. You and Miss Worthen decide who want to go first. Either one of y'all decide that and proceed, and after that, the other one go. I said I would do it. I'm just talking, and I'll do it. So no excuse. Excuse me. Do y'all want to hear from Mr. Griggs before y'all go, or you want to go after them, Mr. Griggs? 
Okay, so one of y'all, who gonna go first? Is it the Miss Worthen seemed to be eager? Go ahead, Miss Worthen. <laughs> and you know I'm watching because the professor, I'm gonna stay on his good side. So I've got the contract and I've got some pieces circled here. Um, it says in task order number two, uh, B, I, to plan and manage the removal of at least 6,000 lead service lines in 2018. Mm -hmm. And that to me is not debatable, no matter what else is said. It says in there, removal of at least 6,000 lead service lines in 2018. Uh, then it says on the next page, four hydrovac exploration crews. Were those still in operation? I, I get confused sometimes with the mayor deciding not to use the hydrovac anymore. Were the four hydrovac exploration crews still in operation? I don't believe they are. Okay. Whose decision? I said it was the mayor's because I believe that's who it is, but I want to hear for sure. Whose decision was it to stop using? You would have to ask the department about that. Which department? Department of Public Works, which is the, the, the ultimate entity that's controlling all the work. But let me, bring oh. let, let me bring another point to you that, that I think is Hold wrong. up, hold up. Mr. Benzie, this question keep coming up. You want to come speak on it or plead the fifth or whatever? <laughs> he plead the fifth. <laughs> we'll get you on those. Go ahead, proceed. But, but let me add, there's something I think that you're both missing. And, and when we do a contract, there are a couple things that are also part of the contract. That is our proposal and our best and final offer. As, the, as <clears throat> your city attorney advised you, what, we are, what our obligation was is looking at excavations. And as she advised you earlier, and I'm sure you were paying attention, what she also said is excavations we had a guarantee, we had to meet numbers of excavations. And, and, we, and, and in terms of getting lead service line replacements, as everyone basically suspected, and your director said also, those lead service lines, the number of replacements are gonna be minimal. But what I would ask you to do as you look at my contract, look at the RFP as well, and the proposal, because that's what we were showing. Because the proposal addresses things also that were relative in terms of how we negotiated the contract. So the, that contract plus our RFP and our best and final are all what, what we, we've been living up to. I hope that helps you. Well, you didn't live up to this line. And um, also uh, about the excavations. Uh, yeah, you had to do excavations and so many of them, but you did it randomly. Mr. Wong testified that it was no ward left behind. Can you explain that strategy to us? No, ma'am, we did not do it randomly. I don't know what Mr. Wong said. And he said no ward I, left behind. I, I, don't, I don't know what he said, I was not there. But he said no ward left behind. I don't know what he said. Okay, no hold up a there. minute. Hold okay. up a minute. We gon' we gonna agree that you don't know. She said it. Let's well, see. now you know. Hold, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, y'all. Come on, y'all taking my kindness for just a weakness. I'm really trying to be facilitative and but, nice. Um, let's see what she said. He said, Miss Worthen, listen to this, and Mr. Moss, and then we'll go back. I'm gonna tell you to proceed. This is all I was going to say is that that's being taken out of context. You need to read the entire transcript of Mr. Wong's testimony in court. That was one snippet of an entire hearing in which he testified about, uh, about what happened in, in the predictive modeling and other things because that was a subject in court which later the NRDC withdrew their motion on. Now, this so, was in the investigative hearings. He said it to me. Uh, okay. So uh, what I'm saying to you is, is to, one, look back at the record, um, not just use one snippet of information, use all the information and review transcripts that actually accurately depict what was said. That's all I'm saying as a recommendation instead of taking something out of context. I'm going to allow you to proceed, Miss um, 
worthy, but I'm gonna say this as well. And that's what we're doing on the predictive model. It's an important piece, it's a legitimate piece, it's a relevant piece, that's why I allow it, but it's one piece. Continue, Miss Worthy. It's not taken out of context. context. He said it, he could not explain exactly why he did not use the predictive model. His explanation was no ward left behind and they wanted to work in every single ward no matter if it was predicted to be let or not. There's, that's the only explanation for that. Now you know I like Mr. Wong. He was a nice guy, I like him. Okay. Okay, proceed. Um, and so it also says, let me get to, sorry I just circled everything says the schedule will be updated and provided to the city of Flint monthly along with four week look ahead schedules. The schedule will be used to manage production, uh, identify opportunities, develop action items and recovery plans. Uh, did the city council get that update every month? That goes to, to, the, to the department, ma'am. I mean, Did you I, give I the city of Flint the update every this, month? Yes, we, we, we lived up to our to the administrator who is administrating this. Can I ask this. the city, please? Who represents that? Did you get an update monthly from AECOM? Ms. Worthing, who are you talking to? Uh, whoever, I uh, think the DPW director. You missed my point. I thought you was going to say Mr. Oh, through the chair. chair. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. To, through the chair. Because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to let y'all flow, but y'all just forget all I'm about. Sorry, I'm a little bossy. Mr. Benzie. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I can. Uh, so... What update are you asking about? I <laughs> did AECOM provide the city monthly with the four, what their progress and a four week look ahead schedule? They provide it weekly. Whatever. Yeah, they, they meet weekly. And since daily. September 4th, I believe we've been sending uh, our progress reports to, to you guys in the email. Yeah, and I was looking more at like, not just where they're gonna be because that just said like where they were working, like what they've, what they found, we were supposed to like citywide have more meetings. Uh, I can't, I couldn't find that in here, but I know we had the one big hurrah kickoff, but then I don't remember the city ha ever having any other meetings like that was promised to us. Uh, I do not believe we did have any other meetings. I think that was um, a joint decision between the, the administration and AECOM. Okay, moving on. Um, page 2-2. Two, two says AECOM will work with the City of Flint to develop a program management plan and supporting procedures that define best practice processes for controlling, managing, and reporting the projects and program. So there's best practices in the contract. Oh. On page 2-3, AECOM shall engage with the existing Fast Start project management team to gain an understanding of the Fast Start program and help enhance systems processes and data management used to manage the current phase of the project. So when I said I'd assume that you would use the predictive model because Fast Start was, it's right here. You were supposed to improve on that model no, and you did worse. No ma'am, you're incorrect. Let me, let, me, let me tell you what that is. That is basically how we set up the program. As I said to you earlier, what we were hired to do is not only look at the lead service removal, but to set up entire program management system for program management and construction management of not only lead service, but these other components. What that talks about is setting up the program management, the PMP, the program management program, standard operating procedures of how this entire, you're focusing only on lead service. I cannot, I can had I, to focus, I, pardon me ma'am, I had to focus on everything, and that's what we've done. Did we meet, did, after we came on board, December 28th, did we meet with the Fast Start team? Yes. And, and that was how we kicked it off, and that's where we moved, yes. Again, I'm gonna say this to you one more time. If, in fact, your team wanted the, product, the model in our, on contract, we would have we relished that. But it had to be in my contract. I'm not taking assumptions that I can think what you want. You must tell me. And then I'll do what you ask me, if it's a reason. Let's, let's, Mi let's can get I just to that predictive model. Come on, Can I just finish I, this one last? Yeah, you do in one response. more. 
Thank I'm you. I'm gonna quickly go to Fields, and I'm like, that's y'all, sure. Professor. You and Miss Fields is the He's advocate for the professor. I don't want the professor tripping, and I want everybody to hear what y'all think you want to know or hear. So, all right, professor, hold me harmless. Proceed, Miss <laughs> Worthen, and then Miss Fields. But that's y'all, professor. He's my professor too. Now look at it. I like that guy. Well, we'll see what his model say. Go ahead. Well, I would like to say that I'm a teacher and I do multiple things all at one time and I have to be responsible for meeting the needs of all of my students and completing the tasks and uh, job assigned to me, whether it's overwhelming or not. So it says again, AECOM shall engage with the existing Fast Start project management team to gain an understanding of the Fast Start program and help enhance the system, so Fast Start program, processes and data management used to manage the current phase. Information obtained during this period will be used to directly transition into the phase five lead service line removal work. And that's what we did. Uh, we have a difference of opinion because and, I don't and, and believe. certainly we can do that. Okay, that's all, thank you. All right, I'd like to say I'm glad that uh, it's on, it's just not up. I'd like to say I'm glad that Ms. Wheeler referenced Mr. Wong's testimony in the transcript of a, uh, some recent briefs that were filed with the concerned pastor's lawsuit, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Wong actually spoke about, he was asked about using this predictive model, et cetera. And at one point he said, well, the city policy changed because he was asked about uh, <coughs> Some, I wish I had it with me so I could read it to you verbatim, but I don't. But um, here's what I'd like to get to the bottom of, because you're claiming no responsibility for actually successfully locating yeah, lead yeah, lines. I'm not saying that at all, man. That's not what I'm Please saying. Please don't interrupt me. Please, okay. Mr. I, I just, if you make a statement, what I'm saying. Well, you'll get an opportunity okay. to well, talk, yeah, but please still, don't interrupt me. Okay. Let her finish, please. Thank you. Okay, it's clear from the number of lead lines that were actually replaced in 2018 that Fast Start in 2018 was a dismal failure, in my opinion, because instead of removing 6,000 lead lines, you removed not even a third of what you were supposed to remove. But the approach was different. So one thing I wonder is, based on Mr. Wong's testimony about the city policy change, I want to know this decision to use your own version of a predictive model ver or how you figured out where you're going to send contractors to dig versus what was used successfully for two years prior to that. I want to know who decided that. According to Mr. Wong, city policy changed. So I don't know if Mr. Benzik has the answer to that, if you have the answer to that. Who at the city? change the policy that Mr. Wong was referencing? I, I can't speak for Alan uh, in terms of a policy change because policy never changed. Within our RFP and our response, it asked us to put together our own model, how we would address it. That's what we've done. Ed Thorpe came up here and talked to you about that. Okay, and again, I'll, I'll reference this to you one more time. We had, we were not in a, in opposition of anything at all. We came here to help the city. If in fact, if in fact, this model that you are so champion of, if, you're, if your administration wanted that, then it should have been advised to us. Not only early in the RFP, it was not talked about. The RFP says this is what we want you to do. I showed you too that when we negotiated, the scope decreased. At that time, no one talked about this predictive model. Excuse me, when you negotiated, when was this? When we negotiated the contract. Initially, you're right. That is correct. That's the only time we negotiated, ma'am. Okay, okay, pardon me. You want me to finish? Quickly.
And so what I, what I say to you, as I've continually said to you, that if in fact that model was relevant, you heard your own director address the relevancy of it. Not me, your own director. If it had relevance, then it would have been not only in the RFP, it would have been in scope, or you would have asked us to, to put it in the scope when we negotiated, or lastly, you would have amended our contract and our scope to have it in there. We've not pushed back. And let me say one other thing to you. Okay, quickly, Mr. Moss. The other thing I want to say to you is, you know, we create, as, as, as I've said this to you a number of times, again, let me, let me say it, and I hope you can understand what I'm saying is, we created our own approach, our own model, using your data, all the data we had, the same data that he probably has as well. And we, we brought that together as indicated by direction of the RFP. That's how we, in fact, worked in conjunction with the city and these contractors to attack the 18,000. Mr. Ross, how often do you have project management meetings with AECOM and the DPW and the Too many times, probably every day. I beg your pardon? We probably meet. How much, when, how, how do we meet with these guys here? AECOM has a weekly meeting with uh, city staff dealing with this project, discussing what has been going on, the problems that may occur, the progress okay, that we okay, have, Okay, thank you. That's what I wanted to know is the frequency. Okay, now, if you're having meetings that often, okay, and you've come up with your own model or your own way of doing it, I would think you're saying, oh, it wasn't in our scope, it wasn't in our whatever. Some things are so obvious, you don't even think you'd have to mention it. I mean, you've got a model that Mr. Wong, who was project manager, now gone, very convenient, 94% success rate. He was quoted as saying that. It's in the transcripts. And you come up with something that basically, if I threw this at the, a map, <laughs> it'd have a better chance of hitting a lead line than whatever you came up with. That's your opinion. That's so, I would like to say that in your weekly meetings, at somewhere, you must have become aware that you weren't getting a very good success rate with um, finding lead line replacements. And I want to respond to something uh, Mr. Mays brought up. You know, 100 million that you, you know, denied your nice presentation into the workforce in Flint. Well, you know, that's really No, ma'am, not 100, just 1 million. Sorry, 1 but, million. But that's okay, perhaps you, one million. it should be 100 million if we had done the, the program, but that's Well, fine. unfortunately, this money, this initiative is for public safety. It's not an economic development initiative. So what you're doing with this money, the priority should be replacing lead service lines. And that's what it is. And the other things. Well, it doesn't appear to be because you didn't even hit your own target rate for this year. We hit so our target while that's now. nice and I'm glad that people are getting jobs of it out of it. Um, <laughs> that isn't the point of this program. <laughs> no ma'am, it's not. What we show was added value to the program. And and we hit our target. Well, added value, I'd like to know what our city attorney's going to do about the 4,521 pipes that you have not replaced that are in your contract you have to replace in 2018. Uh, again, I, you are completely misinterpreting things. And like I said, I, I, I wish that you would take time to read a full and complete contract and also the concerned pastor's agreement because you're making this adversarial. It does not have to be adversarial. We are all on the same team to get lead, get poison out of the city system. And I think that needs to be said. I think that needs to be brought back to what our purpose is because this just seems like a complete attack session here and it's getting away from what we need to do. What we need to do legally, we always do and process things through when there's a problem. 
that, that is not the case that we're dealing with right now. So to make this something else um, completely gives us off target from where we are. You know what? I, I'm just going to say this quickly. I can read. You can read. I'm not an attorney, but I can certainly read the multiple places where it says that their contract, they were supposed to replace 6,000 lead service lines. So, and it is complicated with the concerned pastors, settlement, whatever, and it's all up in court. And I just want to point out that this, this has been a, and I'm really glad that the city is now thinking, oh, maybe they ought to look at this because apparently they found more lead lines using this approach than whatever it is AECOM was doing this year. But council has a responsibility to keep this city fiscally on an even keel. And there are many other things I want to talk about, including the liquidity of reimbursements and where we are. But uh, the time on this, we're dealing with trying to look at, as we move forward, okay, hopefully AECOM will understand the best way to move forward and directions will be given to contractors uh, that makes sense. I, and I would like to see uh, Professor Schwartz's presentation, but I also would like to make a motion, a substitute motion, to refer this contract resolution to special affairs. Point of information. Mm, what's your point? Thank you, Mr. Chair. How long and why am I, why am I'm the only council person frustrated with the disrespect I'm hearing ever since we've been here? Mr. Moss been standing there, and when uh, she referred wait, to Mr. Chair, and when she referred to Mr. Schwartz, which she worked That's with, that's not a is point so of information. Look. Um, you need to shut point up. Point of order. No, no, hey, hold on. You need to shut no, up. Mr. Davis. Point of order. Wait a minute. They've been disrespecting this company ever since on. we've been here. What's your point? These two is enough is enough. That's not a proper okay. point right. of you information. Need to shut up. Hey, guys, we're going to stop. When they refer to her go. co-worker, it's so inviting and friendly. It's so <laughs> disrespectful. What anybody in the administration bring to this council is always disrespect. Enough is enough. Is there a second for that motion? I second that. It's been second. Uh, any discussion? Discussion? It's been a motion made and properly second to, thank you, Mr. Gear. It's been a motion made, hey, but. It's been a motion made and properly second. We're going to have a discussion on the motion. I like Mr. Guerra's style, but Mr. Guerra is Mr. Guerra. I wish I could have won when I was that age. I tried to win elections for years, couldn't win nothing. Go ahead, Ms. Fields. I'd just like to point out the reason I would like this move to uh, special affairs is because Mr. Winfrey and Ms. Galloway uh, we're not able to be here this evening, and they will both be here on Monday. And I think this vote, uh, very importantly, should include votes from every council person that's been elected in the city. This is probably our priority one issue right now, is trying to get lead lines out of the city of Flint, the public safety. So that's, that's why I would like this postponed to special affairs. Any more discussion on the motion to postpone the special affairs? I would say this. A motion to postpone the special affairs move this forward. Special affairs meets at 4.30 on Monday prior to the council meeting. A motion to move this to special affairs will allow Mr. Winfrey and Miss Galloway to vote. I try to count votes somewhat well. I ain't always <laughs> accurate on doing it. And I'm still, as we were in discussion on the motion, nobody appeals, nobody appealed me, Mr. Mr. Branch. I just 
ignored the rules and let people talk more than five minutes. I ignored the rules and I let people talk more than two times. I'll await that same courtesy, but nobody appealed me. If they had appealed me, we would have had a vote and I'd have had to rule that this discussion was over a long time ago. But I just played a certain role and let it flow. And the reason I played a role and let it flow is because, in fact, I wanted Mr. Winfrey to come back. He said he'd be back. And I don't know how Mr. Winfrey, Mr. Griggs, or Mr. Guerra would vote. I don't know how nobody will vote, but I know how I'm going to vote. I'm going to vote to move this forward and approve this contract because this is like a whole nother department. And we needed that department. We needed it to submit a project plan for hundreds of millions of dollars with the state. We needed it to do reimbursement and take invoices because Mr. Newsom's department got, got two or three people in finance. It couldn't have did it. And we'd have blew hundreds of millions of dollars in my opinion. I knew of a company like AECOM out of New York and I told the administration about them early on because my friend Ed Taylor had them contact me. I got calls from all across the country, Texas, Florida, California. And so this is the management team that somebody on the council voted a $5.5 million contract. And as we make decisions, whether we gonna work through the winter, whether we make decisions, whether or not they manage phase six, I go out on the line and talk different than anybody in the city so far. I publicly say, I'm gonna think it's gonna need a phase seven, Pastor Gilbert. Everybody talking about wrapping up phase six, 2019. Guess what Councilman May say? I think it's gonna be some phase seven, but if y'all manage us through phase six and we get done with every house, I'm gonna be surprised. And then when we get into phase six, Professor Eric Schwartz, cause your name Eric, I'm gonna see how your predictability model hold up. We gonna see all of this, we'll see. I'm gonna predict your predictability model gonna probably be good because your name is Eric. <laughs> you know, I seen them dark colors and red colors in the first ward. Mr. Davis pointed them out in the third ward. Prior to this day, we thought all of it was in, I didn't really think it, I hadn't really paid attention, but it was like it's the center of the city, the fifth ward. That's not true. So we gonna end up doing the whole city and we gonna end up doing addresses. And when we finish, we hope we got a complete record and a good record for generations to come. I've watched and listened to this, and um, Mr. Schwartz, I didn't know they was gonna put a substitute motion. Any objections to Mr. Schwartz doing his presentation? I would like the vote first and then the presentation. I would like this presentation first and then vote. Any objections? You got the objection or is you gonna let it happen? Let's hear from Mr. Schwartz and then vote. Now if it's an objection, okay. No objections, Mr. Schwartz, go ahead and then we'll get back to the vote. Y'all remind me where we at. This thing go to special affairs and guess what? I'm gonna still try to push it for passage Monday if it do. I might support the motion to special affairs because Herb ain't here. Go ahead, Mr. Schwartz. Professor Schwartz, the floor is yours. Mr. Councilman, thank you for giving me the floor. Council members, thank you for having me here today. Uh, city administrators who are here, thank you as well. Uh, I first wanna say that I, I am here to provide information, to clarify, to help the city and AECOM find as all of the lead and galvanized lines in the city of Flint to remove them, to, prov to provide the cleanest delivery of water as possible to the residents of Flint as quickly as possible. That's why I'm here. 
the one thing that I have to contribute as a data scientist, as a statistician, is to simply help with some of that uncertainty that all of you are, are discussing about which homes likely have lead and which don't. In no way am I disagreeing that with enough money and enough time, all homes should be visited and inspected. Absolutely. Couldn't dis could not disagree with that. The only comments I'm going to be making are about how to prioritize those homes and how to help prioritize go going forward. And if anyone has any questions, how to possibly think about how we would have recommended prioritizing them prior. But as the city attorney, uh, Ms. Wheeler, and, and also uh, Mr. Kim, as attorneys of the city, I've continued to work with them and plan on continuing to work with them through the plaintiffs in the concerned pastors case. I'm, I'm pleased to hear that ACOM will continue to work with us, and I will be happy and excited to work with you in 2019. Absolutely, as I've been eager to do so all of 2018. So th thank you for that. This isn't the first time I've stood before this council. I came here when Mr. Mays was on council in 2016, September, with General McDaniel to talk about the plans for 2016 and 17 to use this predictive model. So this council, although one out of nine members, I believe, was here, uh, was aware of that. And I'm, I'm pleased to be invited back. Through 2016 and working with Fast Start, we did use the insights from this model and develop them to simply guide and give predictions to the Fast Start team at individual house level, which homes were likely to have lead, which homes were not, and also at the neighborhood level, which regions were likely to have more lead and less lead. At times, we explicitly sent addresses by email to General McDaniel, Nicholas Anderson, and the team that, uh, uh, that Rob Bisnick referenced. We worked with them, we met with them regularly, and this was when I referred to we, I'm referring to myself and my colleague, Professor Jacob Abernathy, who was at University of Michigan at the time, now at Georgia Tech. We provided those very simply, sometimes just by email, and sent lists of addresses. We are happy to continue doing so, we also, at times, sent an entire list of, for every single address, just a probability, the chance between zero and 100% that any one of those homes had lead. If we knew for certain, because that home was visited, it had a zero or 100. And we sent those, not just to the city throughout 2016 and 17, but also to AECOM in, as was mentioned, in May, 2018, while we had offered to send it earlier, as early as 2017, December. But I'd really prefer to just talk about 2019 going forward. And I'm happy to explain where some of these predictions come from. I'm happy to go into some detail about what makes one home more likely to have lead than another. And if you have any questions about 2017, and 16 and 18, I'm happy to answer, but I'd rather talk about 2019 going forward. So I'm, I'm happy to take any questions now and, and go to the map. I don't have a planned set of figures other than exploring that map with, with some of you and answering questions that you may have. Ms. Fields. When you tried to contact the ECOM, I said I have read your declaration. We have it here. It looks like you made extensive efforts to email, to phone, to whatever, to talk to them about this. Uh, did they at any time explain to you that they were going to use their own methodology rather than the one that had been developed and been used the past two years? Ms. Shields, thanks for the question. I, I, I do want to reiterate, I'm, I'm eager to continue to work with the city and to work with AECOM in 2019. To directly answer your question, in December 2017, while the planning of transition from General McDaniel's Fast Start to AECOM's Fast Start team, I had an extremely encouraging conversation with Alan Wong and his team at AECOM in this very building. The follow-up communications on the phone two weeks later and by email were encouraging, and my colleague and I were really excited to work with a multi-billion dollar company 
to apply these predictions going forward. I was excited. In January 2018, in the new year, I hadn't heard on the follow-up, and so I reached out and said, we'd love to help. How can we send these predictions to be most helpful to you? How can we work together and plan for 2018? And as I wrote in the declaration, in the sworn declaration, in the court documents, unfortunately, I didn't hear back. I continued following up. You can see in the declaration all the number of times that I reached out. I communicated at times with the city, and we had encouraging conversations, but unfortunately, I didn't hear back from AECOM until May 2018. At that time, the moment I heard back, we were put in touch. The moment we were put in touch with the folks who were managing some of the data, we sent those predictions right away in 2018 May to the data person that Alan Wong had connected us to. Were you ever at any time told that they weren't going to use your model, they were using their own thing? Um, you know, were you ever given any, in, and if so, were you ever given any indication? Because you said they were receptive, but why they weren't working with you during 2018 using your model, which, as I understand, your model, the more data you put in as you go along, the better it gets at predicting. That's correct, Ms. Fields. Uh, as time went on, we documented in peer-reviewed journals that it was getting better. Um, and we've documented to the city and, and the general's team uh, that, as well as provided that information to AECOM in 2018. If you want to ask why AECOM did not use the information we provided, I would encourage you to ask them. But I, I don't have a good answer. You, you were never given any... I understood that there were many complicated forces at play in doing a large construction project and a large engineering project like this. I appreciated that and continued asking how we could provide that information to facilitate that collaboration going forward. Mr. Okay. Fields, one at times, at one last the, question. Yeah, the, I'm going to let you answer the, ask the last question, but if I may. Mr. Wong said under oath in the investigative hearing that he testified that they took all things into consideration, including the model. Proceed. I, as a, Ms. Wheeler, can you clarify that point? I can clarify okay. it. You don't ask Ms. Wheeler, okay. you ask the chair. Chairman Mays, can you clarify Hold that up. point? I'm talking, please. And then I'm going to give the floor back to Ms. Fields. I, I'm pretty shocked. I've been in every hearing. I initiated them. I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to tell you like this. If you hear me say that he spoke the words that I just alluded to about using all models and factoring that in, I would bet you, let me be fair, 96% that you can pull that testimony back up. Now, I'm going to tell Ms. Fields to continue. And if you and her want to ask the city attorney something, but I'm going to ask you all go through the chair. Um, continue, Ms. Fields. Um, that's all, Mr. Schwartz. I, you can't answer questions. Somebody else needs to answer that question. But it doesn't sound like, it sounds to me from your declaration that you really have gone out of your way to offer your assistance, the assistance of your graduate students, you know, this thing that you and Dr. Abernathy put together, I mean, over and over and over again, you know, uh, in 2017 and 2018. And from what I'm reading, you're very polite about it, but it looks like uh, you were pretty much ignored. After. So, May oh, no, go ahead. Chairman May, I, may and respond. And to be fair to you, um, believe me, I was here. I heard the testimony. Certain folks wasn't, and I'm being fair to you, her, and everybody. I just want to interject that, but my bark is worse than my back. Just feel comfortable and proceed. So uh, just to, to respond to Ms. Fields' la latest comments, in after May 2018, 
when we were in communication with AECOM regarding the exact predictions that we had provided, at that point, I don't know exactly why or how they were used. I do know that in the testimony in a hearing in August 2018, that Mr. Wong testified to the degree to which he knew or was aware of the model, and that in the transcript there's a discussion between Mr. Kim, the attorney, and, and Mr. Wong about that. That conversation does not depict the details of the model. It does not <coughs> detail the fact that there were predictions for which homes had lead lines exactly. It doesn't depict the fact that we could provide those predictions not just at the household level, but at the block level or the neighborhood level. So well, I think you're going to be famous now because you're already famous. We like the model. You hear the Zara been writing about you. I see my attorney friend leaving, and I'm telling you this, we are proud of you, and just hang in there. It took us a long time to get the publicity. We got you going to be known. Proceed, Ms. That's, Bill. That's you. not even my goal, Mr. Well, Mayor. that's, that's <laughs> my goal, is to get credit due to people when it's due, whether it's AECOM, you, the city, me, whatever. If you done, Ms. Fields, then at the moment I am. Okay, I seen Mr. Davis, I seen Ms. Worthy, and I seen Mr. Griggs. What is it, Miss Madam City Attorney? Hold on a minute, Mr. Davis. Yeah, and just to kind of add add to some of that, um, the information that was provided, we were, the city was requested to provide how we were coming up with our list. And that was one of the things that was asked by, by the, the state in some of the calls that we have with the EPA. And um, AECOM did provide a document that gave, that gave extensive background on what it used in compiling the list. And it goes through a lot of different things as far as 2017 uh, parcel data set, parcel ID, parcel text blocks, parcels. Uh, full property addresses. It, it's a very extensive list. The one, the thing I want to skip to, not to ignore. These are all important too. But as far as with the University of Michigan, in this, it talks about historic compositions, historic service line composition one provided by the University of Michigan Flint, historic service line composition two provided by the University of Michigan Flint, historic service line composition three provided by the University of Michigan Flint. Historic service line composition four provided by the city of Flint historic um, electronic records, University of Michigan heat mapping, heat index map. So those are some of the things that they did also discuss that were provided this year um, and, and with regard to that. Let me do this, Mr. Davis. Ms. Fields. Beg your pardon, okay. <laughs> this is on behalf of a specific I'm gonna get Paul constituent. His first one and Does your model, and, and I have to tell you, you know, not being a statistician, there are times when the layperson's eyes will cross over reading some of this, but trying to understand it as best I can, did your model take into account at any point when AECOM and or the city were sending out people duplicate times on the same streets to do both hydrovacking and excavations? Did your calculation, because uh, that's what I have here, and this over near Potter School, which already in the predictability model, um, you know, is copper lines, and in fact, um, this gentleman had... Is that Craig Street? Uh, no, this particular one is Holly, but it's, it's all in the same area, the same kind of thing. Um, AECOM has sent out contractors not once where they do their thing. They come back with, they, they hydrovact, they have a certification saying their lines are copper, and then they just sent out somebody again this year. So are, is your model taking into account duplicate times that AECOM is directing contractors to the same damn addresses? Ms. Fields, I 
my model is just taking in the raw information. We're not taking into account the actions of, uh, of the contractors other than what they found. So what they found. So it's not how many times they're going out to the same if you place. Find, if you go to the same place twice and you've accurately looked, you're going to find the same thing. I'm not an expert in why one might visit twice. I can tell you that if a Hydrovac team visits and concludes that it is lead or galvanized, another team will go, as I understand, for the full excavation to remove that entire line. If the Hydrovac team goes and concludes they can't tell what it is, then I also understand that a full excavation team would go to resolve that uncertainty. But I don't know the particulars of this, and I really have no say in, okay. in what no, contractors this, would have been, so I'm sorry. This I, is, this and is especially not in 2018, uh, clearly my recommendations weren't exactly informing the, the action. So if it were 2017, maybe I could speak to it, but I don't know. All right, thank you. Thanks. Okay, Mr. Davis. And then Ms. Worthen and Mr. Griggs. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Professor, I got a question. Um, your predictive model, how accurate really do you think it is? The model that you had up there with the red? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not really how accurate I think it is. Okay. Uh, the, based on the data that's come in after we made those predictions, what we find is, if you gave me one home that was known to be lead mm -hmm. and another home that was known to be copper, but you didn't tell the model which was which, mm -hmm. it would figure it out 94% of the time. So the mayor's percentage is 100. <coughs> we're, not sh we're not shooting for 94, <coughs> 97, or even 99. We're shooting for 100, especially in this city. Now, in my neighborhood, when I spoke over in the committee room, uh, the house was built in 1916 or so. Historic Civic Park, going on a 100-year anniversary next year. But um, Mr. Moss was stating the facts of when they hired on, they hired on for absolute to try to find where, whether it is copper to copper, lead to lead, you want to see for certain, 100% certain, that the, the public was safe. That, that don't bother me if you dug five times and you found out that's copper because it could have been spliced at the house. It, it could be all the way 25 feet or however it is from the, the curb stop all the way. So what am I saying? It's very important. I don't know why my colleagues was hell bent on disrespecting AECOM when all you have is a predictive model. His facts was he wanted to be absolute at what he was trying to do. And you are trying to assist that. There's no animosity there. Nope. But I'm wondering why was all this animosity, all these hours in this council chamber, directed to them for no reason. You're actually saying the same thing everybody else said. You're trying to work with the city and try to come to a conclusion. Why was it so hostile of an environment? And notice it was not, and is not hostile toward you. So I'm trying to get to the bottom of why every time the administration do anything, hostility raises his ugly head. So what I'm saying is this. The model could be used, but I'd rather go with Mr. Moss's concept any day of the week. And we've never been through this before. We, this is a learning deal for the whole United States with the infrastructure problem. And I'd rather have a company want to be 100% certain as the administration. I know the, that's what the mayor wants, 100% certainty. A model don't sound 100% certain not to take nothing away from you. But when you lay your eye on it, it's, it's, it's way better. Excavating is 100% certain because you can look at the whole deal. And these people deserve this. Now, I'm still baffled. I'm baffled because of the frustration of the animosity. It ain't nothing got done. We're only on one resolution today. I don't know why everybody's sitting here wasting all their time hearing questions like y'all well, not you, but A come under oath of something they did terribly wrong. And he studied saying, we want absolute, and that's what you hired on for. Mr. Moss, I'm going to say it again publicly. I am embarrassed for you, and I will apologize for my colleagues for this ignorance. Not meaning they stupid, but they're acting stupid. 
Uh, this, this, because if you could give it, she'd be able to take it. And to have a, a world-renowned company sit here and get disrespected in a city you're trying to help, that don't make no sense. And I am done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Davis. May <laughs> Councilman, may I respond? You may. Mr. Davis, I, I, I want to agree with a lot of uh, uh, parts of what you said, because just like Mr. Moss, all of my efforts are also to help the city Absolutely. and AECOM be 100% certain over time, by the end of this whole project, about the materials in every single Absolutely. home, so all of them are safe. M Mr. During, the, during the course of that effort, however, there are limited dollars and there's limited time. And so today, you can't be 100% certain. You have to choose. Do you want to be closer to 100% certain or further from 100% certain? Excuse and me, why you can't be 100% certain? If, if, if we had the money and the city had the money they messed us to up. excavate... Every the city ain't got to come home. up, the state should come up with the funding. I'm, I'm on the Davis. side, it's going to take a, a long day to convince me we should settle for anything when people are dying. It should be 100%. If all the money were there, every single home should be excavated tomorrow. If it was sir. in another community, it would be. I, I, I wish that, I, don't I wish it were. I, I'm done, I'm done. <coughs> Mr. Davis, the... The intent is to have 100% done. That's where we want to stay. I, I want to ask uh, through the chair, through Councilman Mays, if I've provided 94% assistance when there is uncertainty, I would ask you to ask AECOM the percentage of their certainty without digging, before digging. Okay, let me say... Because that was what I had provided. Let me say this, if I can help. What happened, what happened, Pastor Gilbert, is this. The city bid it out, bid it out ten zones. Now, they could have bid it out three zones. And they could have used your predictive model to bid out three of the highest predictive zones. And they could have did that. And they could have put five or six contractors in those zones. But that ain't what happened. The facts is that 10 zones were bidded out. And this council, along with the city administration, entered into the contracts with different contractors in 10 zones. The city ain't just did this with the administration. It was the council and the administration. They approved contracts for contractors in 10 zones. So the council was a part of that. And so it's really futile to talk about which zone should have been in that had the most. Because this council approved contracts for 10 different zones with contractors. That's the facts. Now, once you do that, you can go back and change order and ask contractors, will you let these zones you want to bid on go and go to this one zone and be in the 94 percent but that ain't the fact of what's happening and so i kind of get let down when people don't put it in proper perspective that the council approved contracts in zones that wasn't in your predictability model and now they try and act like it's AECOM and or the administration and nothing to do with the council. Had the council been as sharp as some of us are now, we might have said we won't approve but three zones. That ain't what happened. So you got folks who been involved on the proving. I don't know. I'd have to look at this council when they came on. They came on November 2017. Mr. Um, Moss, what month did we do this 5.5 million contract? December 2018. So the same people, Mr. Newsom, Mr. Benzik, when did we approve the 10 zone contracts? About when? May of 18, and y'all came on at about December of 2017. 
17. See how I had to get that right? I had to give a leading question and got an answer, and then my brain kicked in. Because I didn't go to U of M, Professor. I'm Michigan State. So now, this is what we got going. We got a council, same council members, voted to approve contracts with 10 zones. Mike didn't know nothing more about the predictability model than AECOM. They voted to approve it. Maybe they knew, maybe they didn't. Then we get information, and everybody going crazy about what AECOM or the administration should have did. You didn't even know, and you approved 10 zones. Now you know. Now you can decide if you want to hold up your approval until they put predictability model in the scope. You want to, and this ain't AECOM's contract, it could be, but more so the contracts to the contractors that's replacing and doing lead service lines. This council now know if they want hydro vacuum in there before they approve or deny. So all I'm trying to get my colleagues to do is understand how your strategy and contracts and stuff lie. And so it's a new council. And so we have to learn. We really appreciate this exercise because even though we ain't moved from one agenda item, and we have to do a whole lot. We have to do service line replacements, project plans, street maintenance, demolition of houses. We have to do uh, cutting grass. I like for my colleagues to learn more. And I don't care about the public. I don't care when the media leave. All I care is the knowledge that's shared among folks who have to vote. Ms. Worthy. Do I get to speak now? Oh, y'all have been speaking. Don't do me like that. <laughs> I've spoke less. See, now, nah, yeah, you get to speak now. Go ahead. I just wanted to hear about the different wards uh, that Kate had mentioned earlier. Like, if you could give us, like, just a snapshot of each ward and I guess what your model says and how it's been used so far. Sure. Um, thank you, Ms. Worthing. Mm -hmm. uh, and before you proceed, hold that thought. Ms. Worthy, Ms. Fields, Mr. Griggs, all council people, Ms. Winfrey Carter and Ever, this is exactly what should have been happening under oath. You shouldn't be asking him questions un not under oath. Mr. Moss, wouldn't you have a love to see him under oath? Y'all got to attend these hearings, and then we'll move forward. But this has been a good finance committee meeting, and I receive all of the answers, whether they are under oath or not. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ms. Worth. Ms. Worthing, the, the best summary of what we know about each of the wards is, is in that declaration that, that, that I have. So th what I could show you right now, what I'll go to the screen and show you, is I, I can show you one of two things. I could show you looking backwards at 2018, 17, and 16, what collectively all of AECOM and the Fast Start team found, and I could, or I could show you for all the homes that have not yet been visited. I like that one. What, what would you expect? <laughs> so I'd rather, as, uh, as Councilman Mays suggested, I would rather talk about 2019 than 2018, 2017, and 16. So, so I'm going to go over there. So, Professor Eric Swartz, am I on your good side or bad side? Don't answer that. Don't <laughs> matter. I was just called a time filler, a walking while talking while walking. Mr. Moss, I think this is going to go to special affairs, and by the time we get to Monday, hopefully it'll go for approval. As um, soon as he finished, we're going to show you a vote. <laughs> I want to thank Mr. Branch for letting me use his computer here. Man, don't worry thank about you, Mr. it. Thank you, Mr. Branch. He a, he a IT oh, man. Oh, no, 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 no. That was perfect before. That yeah, was... but we can't see him. Oh, oh, they... Uh, so, no, no, no. What? We can change. Who cares about that? You want to move it back over there for the council? Very good. Yeah. 
stay dis stay encouraged. Can the council Professor see? Professor Swartz, stay encouraged. Stay encouraged, A. E. Com. What, what you're looking at right here is uh, this is all of the active water accounts, whether or not they've been visited so far in the first five phases or not. When you're seeing a red dot, that's indicating known lead or predicted lead. When you're seeing green, that's known or predicted copper. Ms. Worthing, what I'll do right now is I'll just show you the homes that have not yet been excavated. So to, to the council, what I'm showing here is a map of the predictions. These are all of the active water accounts that have not yet been excavated. So these are, as, as Mr. Davis was saying, these are the ones where we are all uncertain. And with, uh, with all the resources, I would encourage the council, the city, and AECOM to go to all of those to be 100% certain. At this moment in time, we're not 100% certain. What I can tell you is these predictions are much better than not knowing anything. It's not just random guessing. It's not just, as Ms. Fields kind of suggested, just throwing darts on a board. We know a lot more than that. And I can tell you why we know a lot more than that. One of the reasons is, as many of you already recognize, the age of different properties at different areas in the city. We take that into account. We also, as Ms. Wheeler mentioned, have all of the information about what the existing city records were and as they were collected by Professor Marty Kaufman from U of M Flint back in 2016. We've taken every piece of information, just as AECOM has made that effort as well every piece of information to try to calculate and predict which homes actually do have lead. Who paid for that? Who paid for our effort? Yeah. Nobody, sir. I've been unpaid for this. This is my job as a university faculty member who feels as a faculty member at a public institution, the University of Michigan, it's my duty to serve public. That's a blessing. <laughs> I've used my own research money to do this, and that's coming from the state. Google.org, a philanthropic arm of Google, gave a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of, inf of money and resources way back in 2016, and the rest has come from a mix of the University of Michigan and Georgia Tech. So is you short of any funding at this point? Say that again, sir? Are you short of any funding at this point? I think everyone could always use more funding. You know, you know one of the ways to get on the agenda is talk to the finance chairman, don't you? I'm not asking for money, sir. <laughs> all right, well, keep us not posted. Not at all. Keep us posted to keep us continue to do the good the, work. This is, this is what I would like to provide to AECOM and have sent to AECOM as, as recently as September is this raw information. I can provide it in any format. I've given it to... A come in the, the simplest format, just a text file with all addresses and the parcel IDs and these predictions. Have you sent it to Steve Branch or the mayor's administration, Ian? AECOM work for the city. Have you sent it to yes, us? Yes, sir. Have you sent it to us? I, I have not sent that to city council. I wasn't directed well, to do so. Well, keep in mind, you don't have to be directed. What I'm going to try to tell you is this. We got two branches of government. I'd be happy to send it to you. I understand, but just so you know, I don't want you putting all that weight on AECOM when we got a lot of say so. Um, and so just so you know, I hear you, and this is a good dialogue, and you know I'm serious about what I'm talking about. Is um, Ms. Worthing done? If so, Mr. Griggs, you had your hand up. 
Ms. <laughs> Professor, were you done? Le what I, what I want to say is this can be as widely shared as the community would like. And the, the raw information, as Mr. Brand showed in the conference room, while it's on the city website in one form, it separates out phase one to four and phase five. I would happily make the raw past data available and to the, if the community would like, I could provide if the community and, and, and the council thinks it's appropriate, any form of this to the public. Again, as Mr. Davis suggested, these are not certainties going forward. So if any ho for any home that has not been excavated, this is a prediction and a guidance. We are, I understand, and so what I want to do is say this. Council meetings are watched by the public. You hear that voice coming out the back room. We pay thousands of dollars to communicate to the public, so the public is going to hear you and see you. Um, that's what council meetings can do. That's what the media can do as well. So right now, I'm saying on a local, little, small level, you prime time. Um, go ahead, Mr. Griggs. Now, what comes out of it, we don't know. But I'm going to have confidence in you, ACOM, the mayor, the administration, and some of my colleagues, including myself. I would go on the line and say I got confidence in all, but I don't. Mr. Griggs. Uh, just a quick question, Dr. Schwartz. Uh, did you use the, in the model, did you incorporate the classic uh, predictor corrector equation? Which predictive equation what are you to referring use to? One or more. Say that again? Did you use one or more of the equations, predictor correctors? So we've been using a, a variety of predictive models yeah. and taking the average of different ones to make sure that we're correcting for errors in one by balancing them out with others. So is that what you're referring to? Well, I'd had experience with it myself, but it was a partial differential equation, so. Uh, uh, so, Mr. Griggs, I understand you're an engineer as well. Yeah. So I'd be happy to talk about some of the technical details. In terms of what's being used, you can think of it as a computer model that incorporates things like a regression model, which you might be familiar with, yes. at, at using a, a whole lot of flexible software to take every ounce of information that is helpful. There's a lot of information in here that wasn't that helpful in predicting. Okay, thank you. And yes. I'd happily provide all the details to that to, to the council. Yeah, Mr. Mr. President, welcome back. Thank you. Um, it's been a whole lot of good conversation. Um, did nobody appeal me, Mr. President, for letting the rules go haywire? I let people speak more than twice, more than five minutes, I didn't get no appeal from the ruling of the chair. Ain't that a blessing? So it's just been going on. I thought that when you got back, we'd call for the vote, but now Mr. Garrett left. So we on discussion on a motion to send to special affairs. And that motion was made by Ms. Fields in order to allow you and Ms. Galloway to be here, but now we lost another council person. So I'm gonna probably support the motion to uh, I would like move to withdraw to... my motion. It takes, once we in discussion, it takes a vote. Now, if you get five votes, the motion can be withdrawn. But right now, you didn't have the floor and you just hollered out, that's out of order. My apologies. That's okay, your apology is accepted. But see, I have to be really sharp. I almost bought into that, just hollering out. So I was bringing Mr. Winfrey up to speed, President Winfrey, and um, I noticed that you wanted the floor, Ms. Fields, Ms. Um, Winfrey Carter wanted the floor, and Mr. Winfrey. Mr. Winfrey, President Winfrey, you got the floor. I thought, I thought uh, my colleague, uh, Councilwoman Fields, 
Ham was up before me. Well, you can yield to I will, her. I will yield to you her. You know you ain't spoke as much as they have, so you can also yield to Miss Winfrey I, Carter. I, I, I yield to both of them. Okay, so now I'll let them decide, because I know who have been talking, whatever. I'm not going to worry about you, Mr. President. When I try to let you catch up, I I'm it. not going to even call on you like mm -hmm. that then. I appreciate it. No, I'm just kidding. Y'all proceed. He yields to you. Um, thank you, um, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. So, Dr. Um, Swartz, so what I hear is basically that um, we, we really need to check all of the pipes. We need to look at all pipes in the entire city. <sighs> uh, what I'm, may I respond to that? Yes. Go okay. Ahead. Is that a question? Uh, well, I, I would I would agree that over time, and if all the money was there, that's exactly right. However, all I've given is guidance as to, and I would continue to give AECOM and the city guidance as to the order, which home should go first. And the reason that prioritization seems like it's important in the interest of public health is every day that a resident that has lead does not have its service line checked or replaced, that's another health risk. So I, 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 that's the, the key issue is right. if every single home eventually gets checked, that's great and it should happen. And I understand and trust that the city will make it happen. All I'm doing is suggesting that there's an order that might help reduce all of that health risk as much as possible. And that's all, Ms. Councilwoman. Okay, and that, that, that's fine, and I'm, I'm glad. Um, because as far as the Fifth Ward, I know that the majority of the pipes in the Fifth Ward has been um, changed, removed. All of the lead galvanized pipes have been removed based on um, based on what Mr. Branch shared with us earlier today. There are still... And I'm sure there's still some left. In fact, this, even though the fifth ward has been the ward where in 2016 and 17 the most work has been done, Yes. at the start of 2018, it was still the ward that I would have predicted, we predicted to have the most number of remaining lead and galvanized lines still. And to this date, it's still in the top one or two wards that likely have out of the nine wards presently. Okay. Okay. And of the homes in the fifth ward that were visited in 2018, over 80, 85% of those homes, or I believe actually it's over 95% of those homes, were in fact found to have lead and galvanized steel. It just so happened that only a few hundred of those homes were visited in 2018. And I'd, well, be, happy and, to I'd and, be happy to provide you a list of, of those homes for the Fifth Ward. And that could be um, the reasons of a lot of different variables. What, um, you know, as far as like um, no active accounts, Oh, I'm only referring to active accounts, Ms. Councilwoman. Okay, okay. So, um, okay. I just, I, uh, my take on it is, and I don't, I don't care about, I really don't care about the, the, the money issue because that's what got us in this, um, <laughs> this predicament anyway, where we are now anyway, the money. <laughs> money, okay. over, money over health money over public health. My whole take is we need to um, excavate all of the, the lead service lines and we need to change those that need to be changed. Ms. Councilwoman, I, I agree and I think all of the service lines must be checked. I want 100%. I want 100% of them checked and all I'm saying is 100% of them it looks like as of now, 100% of them cannot be checked next month, tomorrow, at any given month. 
Let me chime in. And, and so I, I wanted to just help the order Let so me. that certain ones would, would, would go first for Let, the sake of public health. Let me, chime in. Let me chime in and say this. This is the political, legal, health issue, people, housing, all of what I look at. Now, all nine council people and the mayor run for office. We can look at election results and we can see 600 people voting over here, 1,400 over here, 2,000 over there. I don't trip off of money running out because when we started, we didn't have none. Now we done got in over 459 million. Over 459 million because we were smart enough and I was here to do a strategy of declaring an emergency. There's no way I'm going to sit here and let you or others say to the community, do this because the money might run out. But you can say it. But guess what? I'm going to respond. After a while, I'm going to respond and say, look, the 1,400 and the 2,000 that voted in the first ward, if I see orange in the first and the second, I know what you're saying. Do them addresses in that ward, wherever it's orange, if it's the fifth ward. But remember, before the day, we was here in Center City. So it's a good day because all of them need to be done. And if you look at the state funding, the last two fiscal years, the state gave us 25 million or more dollars, twice, somewhere in that range. If the money run out, it ain't cost Snyder didn't leave them with a $700 million surplus. And if the money run out, it ain't gonna be because Councilman Mays is howling to the top of his voice to leverage some more. If the money run out, it ain't gonna be because the MDEQ ain't been brought in here and sworn in with enforcement of the circuit court. Money right now ain't running out. And it shouldn't be an issue. If it's an issue, Councilman Mays know we sitting on over $16 million right now, ain't we, Mr. Newsom? That's the finance director. He don't want people to know because we got to spend it in 2021 for legacy costs. But in the meantime, we done voted in a more friendly governor, Gretchen Whitmer. So the money issue, just take it out the equation, per se. Right now, you got the MDEQ saying they holding up $3 million of a $4 million deal. And you know why they say they holding it up in my interpretation? Because they want to try to blackmail and squeeze us to use a hydro vac. You're not going to blackmail and squeeze me to use a hydro vac. I like hydro vac anyway. And that's something you add in a change order or you're changing the scope of reimbursement money. And guess what I'm doing? Subpoenaing them. Because I'm not going to sit and read about what they will release if we agree to do this. That's called hostage. That ain't cool. You don't not talk to the council, refuse a subpoena, and then go in the media talking about um, make a decision to use a hydro vac and we'll release $3 million. They ain't running that one past Councilman Mays. I ain't heard nobody talk about it. You hear me talking about it, Zyra? I'm calling it wrong, double wrong, hostage, money wrong, um, trying to push and argue and do wrong. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm fitting to bring them in. Who making that decision to hold up four, $3 million? That's what this council going to get to the bottom of, boy. I can't do it alone, but you see me starting on it. So I ain't worried about the money running out, per se, um, Professor Swartz, because don't throw that out there. I'm going I'm to spend time I shouldn't have to spend, because we know where money is at. We know where the original money came from. It came from the federal government, state government, and they ain't ran out yet. So the only way money would be an issue 
is if folks start holding money back. Wrongfully in some cases, cause they the ones who caused the problem. That's why they're getting prosecuted. Prosecuted. Mr. Prosecuted. Don't, hold up. Now, I'm gonna go to Miss Fields cause he's still yielding the flow. I see you, um, Miss Worthy. But y'all gotta be very careful with the chairman. When I became the chairman of finance, that didn't give up my right to speak. And don't y'all get mad when I let y'all speak back and forth various topics and get antsy when I start doing my thing. Cause I will never give up my opportunity to speak as I've been elected to do. Ms. Fields? I'd like to respond. Now, if you wanted to respond, Mr. Uh, Swartz, to what I said, or if not, let it flow. She got the flow. What's your pleasure? My only comment was I, I respect the decision of, of, of the councilman and, and, and others to say, let's not talk about money. Running out. I but, would like to raise the issue of time. Time and money are both important. Had it been up to me in phase one, I would have brought the U.S. Army Corps engineers and about 50 contractors and dumped the money and it had been done in phase one. So I know about time and money. Ms. Fields? I'd like to respond to Councilwoman Winfrey Carter. Prioritization is what this whole conversation is about. And if you think about this logically, should, if we want to protect public safety, wouldn't we logically go where it's close to 100% sure that there are lead lines to be replaced, rather than go where there's probably only under 3% of lead lines for a whole year? Logically. Wouldn't we want to dig in replace lines in your ward first before we would in the fourth ward where there aren't lead lines? That's what this whole conversation is about. So since they didn't do that this year, you have significant numbers of homes, and they've not completed the homes in Ward 5. You have significant numbers of constituents that are still getting their water through lead lines because they're not doing this logically. That's what this, this whole conversation is about. It's not about shouldn't every line in the city be checked. Well, yeah, as Dr. Schwartz said, eventually we would hope that so we don't have anybody. But first, you logically go where it's almost 100% sure you're going to have lead lines and not spend a year and considerable money where it's predicted you're not going to have lead lines. That's what this whole conversation is about. Mr. Win all. Mr. Winfrey, before you go, I don't think that's what the whole conversation is about. That's a part of it, but logic, can't nobody tell me even though y'all might view it, that I'm not logical. When this water crisis started out, I couldn't tell you what a service line was, didn't know too much about water mains, didn't know nothing about TTHMs, didn't know nothing about 15 parts per billion, the action level, didn't know a lot. And so right now at this junction, juncture, because of you, Mr. Professor Schwartz, the media and others, all of a sudden, some of my colleagues has just zeroed in on one aspect. And now it's saying folks ain't thinking logically. Before you did that, nobody wasn't saying folks wasn't thinking logically. General McDaniels was proceeding. It was a $500,000 no bid type of deal, what I call the initial phase, by the state. You remember that, Mr. Luster? They thought they was logical and we had to go out there, some of us, and show them what a directional bore machine was. They was pulling out lead, balling it up, doing something in Lansing, and they thought it was logical. 
So Ms. Fields, I'm really trying to be delicate here. Don't say that everybody working on a problem ain't using logic. Everybody is being logical, and then when everything come together, including your predictive model, you are 100% right. Moving forward. Mm -hmm. See, I learned that when you be around enough meetings, you hear people say best practices and moving forward. So that's where we at for <laughs> Councilman Mays. We at moving forward. We looking at best practices. We gain in knowledge. And for all those who think I ain't logic or if this or that or the other, they gonna find out that guy is more logical and smarter than I thought. So I hear what's being said and Miss um, Winfrey Carter, you can respond, but some of this stuff is going to go on from now to the cows come home. I'm going to get out of here shortly, but Mr. Moss, you didn't know. I'm the one say I meet in a council meeting. We got other agenda items. I meet the 12, 1 o'clock at night in Burton. They told me they went to two once, Mr. Pastor Gilbert. Miss um, Winfrey Carter, if you need to, and then Mr. Uh, Winfrey. Yes. You know, I'm a very logical person. <laughs> I probably stay up all night. Um, most, most of the times, I only get maybe, what, three hours of sleep because I'm up writing and trying to be lo logical. I'm very logical. My logic is I wouldn't care if we had contractors in every war in every zone changing our pipes because I want all of the pipes in the entire city changed out. That's where I'm coming from. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if we're in the fifth ward, fourth ward, third ward, first ward. I think we should have teams in every ward changing our pipes. And when you finish with the first ward, then you move over to the second ward and help that team. That's being logical. I'm done. Financially and logically and politically, our customers, the people we work for, are all across the city. Do you know when we wasn't in the first ward, all I got, not all the time, but calls and come when you gonna be or when they gonna be over here. People wanted to see a equitable activity. They might not have knew what you knew about the predictability model, but when we say all and we're dealing in politics and folks, because if you don't satisfy folks, I'm gone. I have to satisfy folks and I have to explain to them predictability models, but they, you know, you got people howling sick. They want their pipes checked. They ain't been on my street. And they, you would say, okay, well, we spending the 20 million over here and it's going to be gone and we ain't going to never get over here. I ain't touching it with a 10-foot pole. No. We going to find some over yeah. here, over there, and we going to do it. And if we run out of money on a problem we didn't create, guess what I want? The state to cough it up. Mr. Winfrey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Dr. Schwartz, I, I wasn't here to hear your all of your presentation. I'm sorry I missed it, but I had to be someplace else. But I want to thank you for doing all your work pro bono. I, I, I'm assuming that's what it was. Am I right? That's right, sir. Okay. But let me ask you something. Did General McDaniels use your predictive model? Yes, sir. He did? Yeah, Ms. Mr. Winfrey, um, during 2016, especially in late 2016, just as uh, the Fast Start team was progressing outside of the initial three zones. Mm -hmm. uh, we had sent specific lists of addresses for f next steps. And as uh, Councilwoman Winfrey Carter suggested, and, and I agree, that we at no point ever said, do not go to these neighborhoods. Never said that. Mm -hmm. All we said was, Eventually, you'll go everywhere. Mm -hmm. So the next neighborhood, we would suggest to be this one. Okay. And Another yes, as far as I know, uh, especially with regard to where the Hydrovac excavations occurred, they did, in fact, go to those regions. Okay. The reason I asked that question, because earlier when I was here, 
one of my colleagues asked Mr. Moss about the predictive model, and I do remember him saying that he didn't have the benefit of that, nor was it in his contract. And so I, I, I'm saying this not to you or at somebody else, but so that it can get out in the community because if AECOM did not have the benefit of the predictive model, nor was it in their contract, now we're looking at something different. Do you, do you see where I'm going with this? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that this isn't good stuff mm -hmm. or it isn't that, but I'm just saying a lot of times we can, people will get on a, on a racehorse and just ride it to death. And, and I don't have any reason to believe that your work is a good work or anything like that, but I'm just saying if, if the contract that AECOM has t does not specifically say about a predictive model, then what Mr. Moss says is, is valid. I didn't have the benefit of that. I, nobody ever said that. That's not in my contract. So let me ask this last question. When did, I'd, I'd like to, I really would, I wished I had not missed it. Do you, did, you, did you provide handouts or anything? No, sir, but I, I can send you some, some details. Okay, all right. Then, then and and, and may, may I respond to the, sure. the previous Absolutely. comment? Yes. Uh, in, in no way would I, I have suggested that Mr. Moss and, and AECOM uh, didn't have the benefit of, of the model. In fact, I had, I'd offered exactly that benefit okay. of the model. Okay. So at no point ever was I holding this back okay. in any way. Okay. And any I'm, not, I'm not suggesting okay. that you were. Great. I wanted, to, for the record, to make that crystal clear. Makes sense. And, and, and Mr. Winfrey, from, from the perspective of um, my understanding of helping out the, the city and AECOM satisfy the concerned pastor's settlement, that one of the requirements of the concerned pastor settlement was to use all available data and all available information. Okay. And so that was one of the reasons why uh, after 2017, I was particularly in, engaged. And Mr. Mr. Da Mr. Um, Winfrey and Mr. Swar Professor Swartz, if I'm not mistaken, and I bet you I ain't, Mr. Wong under oath gave us a timeline when he became aware of it. He even testified that it was part of what he factored in. Now, that's what I heard sworn under oath from Mr. Wong. And Miranda, you were here, you kind of nodded and you kind of heard some of that same stuff. So that's what I heard. So a lot of stuff I hear, you know, I can remember. And <laughs> what I heard here today wasn't under oath. I put more stock in that that I hear on those because I think people is less have a less tendency to just answer stuff. So that's all I can tell you. And a couple of the folks who've been really asking and talking today, they missed the opportunity to ask and hear and to communicate, but they blame me. And I'm willing to take all the blame knowing it ain't me. Um, Mr. Winfrey. I'm done. Thank you, sir. Um, was it Ms. Worthing or Mr. Griggs? Uh, Thank you, Mr. Winfrey, for your questions. Thank you. Ms. Worthing. Okay. Well, go ahead, Ms. Worthing, and then I'll go to Mr. Griggs. He's a gentleman. He's a gentleman. And, you know, this is Mr. Griggs' time. I might do it, Mr. Griggs. You might do it with me, but I might wear one of them Santa Claus hats before <laughs> we adjourn for the summer. You really can make some folks happy and smile. This is your season. He's a gentleman. I see you, Mr. Davis. Proceed, Ms. Worth. First, I want to thank the chair for letting us speak more than five minutes. Hey, y'all didn't appeal me. And then I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Schwartz for all the work you've done. Uh, I definitely understand the headache of trying to help <laughs> the city especially and hitting brick walls, getting no responses had to be very frustrating. So I want to thank you for your commitment and persistence. Uh, and you did this for free and I'm extremely appreciated, uh, appreciative of you and your students work. Uh, it's to protect Flint residents. So I if none, if none of my other colleagues get it, I get your work and, and why we would want to follow the model first, 
the money is not guaranteed. We can only work with what we have. I don't do my household budget on money that I might receive next year. No one does. So we have to work with what we're given. I don't know, Gretchen Whitmer is a Democrat, but I don't know if she's going to have it in her budget to give Flint more, especially if we're not good stewards of the money that we have right now. And being a good steward and using common sense would tell us to go to the homes that are most likely to have lead lines for uh, public health reasons. And, and I don't understand why it was followed and then why it wasn't. Um, but I do wanna thank you for being here today and explaining it to us and never stop <laughs> trying to help Flint even when <laughs> we don't do the right thing. Thank you, that's all. Thank you for your comments, mm -hmm. Councilwoman Worthy. And I will continue to work. And as I said to, to uh, the chair and, and others before, uh, and, and to the folks from AECOM here today, I look forward to working with them in 2019. Okay. Mr. Griggs. Mr. Branch, it's all yours. Thank you. <laughs> uh, my question is really for ACOM. Okay. I think, I think we're done with Dr. <laughs> we're done. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Swartz. I've got one oh, hold on just a second. second. Uh, Mr. Griggs, will you yield to, to Councilman yes. Davis? Councilman Davis. Go ahead. It's going to take but a second. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, sir. Uh, Professor, I got just a quick question. In the scope of what's going on, our schools, churches, and businesses included with the restoration of the pipes and stuff? Because they're public places. I, I would defer that question to AECOM. That's a question far okay. outside of my scope. Okay. I can tell you that in the, the data that I've been given, it's uh, residential data. Okay. Yeah. Through, through the chair, I would ask them. Okay. Mr. Griggs. Uh, our question is for ACOM. Okay. Um, Mr. Moss. Mr. Moss, will it... Will it uh, Will it take more money if you were directed to use the model? So I, I, I can't answer that. I, mm -hmm. I can't answer that question. I mean, how, how You'd could have it to take have some more? Time. I mean, it could take more. Yeah, but but, but let, let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. If this body determines that we want to use this model, then ask us to do that, and then we'll, we'll work through some sort of mechanism. But there was something that I, I missed when I was addressing this body earlier. And when I sat with my colleague, he reminded me, part of our assumptions, and it was told, we used data, he provided data to us, we used some of his data, he knows, we, we, we've been back and forth. Now, did we use his model? No, I said this to you. When we responded to the RFP, it did not ask or indicate to use the model yeah, that they indicate. I understand. We, we, we are scientists and engineers as well. What you asked us to do was perform a task. And in that task, you also asked us to perform it and take certain risk and liability and responsibility, and that's what we did. If you ask me to work with this gentleman, we have no problem doing that. Well. Dr. Schwartz just said it wouldn't cost more money. I, I don't know. I, that's the question I was just asking you. He told you he does work for free, so money's not relative to him, right? He told you that, right? Okay. <laughs> let, me, let me say <laughs> this. Let me say this. If, hey, y'all, hold up, hold up, hold up. Come on, I know y'all like being in there, but let me do this. Mr. Sure. Mr. Griggs, if they say don't use the model, mm. ain't been using the model, and they did excavation to 3,000 addresses. And they found 10%. That means the other 90% would be excavation. And let's say that excavation ran $1,700 for the 2,000 Seven hundred. The yeah. three hundred cost four five thousand. So now, if you use the model, and the model is ninety four percent accurate, and you went to those addresses that 
$1,700 for them $2,700 going to rise to over $2,700 times up to $5,000. So, of course, when you find more pipes to change, it costs more money. When you find less pipes to change, you might only spend between 300 and 1700 You ain't spending what it costs to change a pipe. You know, when you look at these bids, they bid it how much they would charge to replace pipes. So, of course, if they found more, it would cost more money. That's a fair statement. Okay, if this uh, motion does go through, uh, the one that Kate withdrew her motion, if it goes to uh, special affairs, I'm going to have to leave pretty soon. Yeah, I'm she just... didn't withdraw the motion because I wasn't oh, allowed. Okay. The motion is I... still on the floor to send the special affairs. Right. I guess that's where I'm at in discussion, is I'd like to see the line items for uh, ACOM's change order. Okay, um, so between now and Monday, um, he said he would like to see the line items um, for the 1.1 million. Um, I don't know um, what AECOM do as far as the 5.5 million. I don't know what records show how it was itemized. Um, the 1.1 million, if y'all got a proposal and some itemizations, that's what I guess he's requesting Monday at 4.30. Now, if, I don't like to keep calling y'all out for nothing, Mr. Moss. And so Monday, I guess, unless I hear any other inquiries other than that, um, if it's available, we'll see it. But if not, I don't know if we going to need folks on standby. Y'all decide. Can you answer his question? Is that information available? Mr. Chairman, I believe um, Mr. Newsom, the CFO, when this was asked earlier in the committee, he stated that he had the line items and the budget. Okay, and he would make so that we'll ask available. that. Mr. Branch and Rob, can y'all have um, that information to Mr. Griggs between now and Monday and then provide it for special affairs? if he's right that Mr. Newsom have that. So if it's available, we would ask that it show up by 4.30 with no objections for special affairs. Okay. Any more discussion on the motion? Mr. Luster, you want to approach? No, I just want to say I'm home. Oh, you need to pro approach the mic, sir. See, hungry. Huh? See, hungry. He hungry. I'm hungry, tired, broke, but I'm working. I'm working. I, I appreciate the process. I, I'm getting tired. I got a four. I got a four a.m. start, and I don't know if you guys need me for anything else. I just want to say, in summation, for my part of this, uh, we are 100 percent of what we do because we put our eyeballs on it. We get we get we get dirty. What we do, we get dirty. Uh, we have to because we don't have the option of telling the public we missed something. Uh, and I know that you guys are debate back and forth and you probably be here all night. But at the end of the day, I am a lifelong resident of this city. It's not, uh, this ain't just some job I just happen to do. This is my passion, this is what I do. Water is what I've been doing since I was 14 years old. And we get, in the, we get in the dirt, we get in the mud, we do whatever we have to do to make sure that the team that supports us, when they stand up here in front of y'all, that they have the most accurate data that we can produce. That's daily. I do 14 to 16 hours per day in the field, and it's because you guys need the information and make a bona fide decision or whatever. And I just ask you if, you, if you feel like you need a question asked or anything like that, call me, meet me in the field, and I can take you through the whole process. Did y'all hear him we don't say, have to guess meet about me it. in the field? Yeah, we don't have to guess about it. You don't have to sit here and badger these people. These people, believe it or not, make this city possible, what we're doing possible, the project that we're doing possible. And I'm proud to have the support of the AECOM team because without it, we would have to be using paper and pencil. 
you know. And right now we have, like I said earlier, we have the most sophisticated electronics available to us. And if they want to spend some more money, I've asked requests for drones and all kinds of things. And, you know, but at like, again, like I say, at the end of the day, I have to be 100%, not 99, not 99.8, because when I put my face out there for the residents, I have to stand up and say, I did what I was supposed to do. Mr. Lester, let me ask you a question. I want you to hear this council person word and then maybe Griggs and everybody else. If a line had been spliced and put back together, you know, part of it copper and part of it lead, at the shutoff valve, mm -hmm. is it a way to detect a new or old or some change that might prompt people to look further? Uh, you without, hear that question? Without getting too technical, here's what we do. Listen to this. Now, here's what we do. We are, we are the eyes and ears of AECOM. We, we actually put our eyes on the pipe. What we do is we try to help the contractor, facilitate the contractor to give us the best information he can give us. Now, there are certain ways to do that. Having been a contractor, we put a tracer on the line and we trace the line. When we get a dead ring, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but when we get a dead ring, we know that there's something there other than copper because the signal changed. And that's when we started investigating. Um, so there's several ways. We do excavations, we do a lot of excavations. And we do a lot of excavation because the people of this city request that we do the excavations. If we go down the street and we have 30 addresses and 40 houses on the street, I guarantee you that those other, I can at least guarantee six of the other 10 are gonna ask us when are we gonna do theirs and why we didn't do it. And then that, I call the support team, Jonathan and Ryan, and ask them to put that address on the list, if we can get it on the list, and we try to, we try to make that happen real time right then. Not, not the next day, we do it right while we have the contractor there. Because there's cost involved in moving contractors around, mobilizing, demobilizing, transferring machines. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on out here that, uh, you know, you really gotta see it. At any given day, I might have 15 machines digging on one street. You know, I might have, like today, I had 30 holes open on one street, you know. So I gotta have eyeballs there, I can't, I can't call Mike and tell Mike I missed it, you know, and the QAQC is reporting and giving me a 30% hit rate and all that. I ain't got that, that that's, not even, that's not even acceptable. So Mr. Luster, is your payroll, your people been caught up and paid, is everybody paid, or is it people waiting on money, waiting on us to vote on 1.1 1 .1 million? Well, I'm gonna ask AECOM the same well that, thing. See, that's where I'm at with it. Okay. If Mr. Cox, Sam Cox, AECOM, your folks, we got to keep people being paid. I, I, I know right. Hold up! I know right <laughs> now that you wouldn't mind working through the winter. If the if the weather permit this activity to go on through the winter, oh. hold on, Mr. Moss. Oh, I absolutely want to work as much as we can because, again, one of the uh, guys said every day, every line that we replaced or investigate to know for sure whether it's lead or not. That's a to us, that's a success. If the city make a decision, this will be the first phase that went through the winter? Well, I, you know, I this think be, so. Yeah, this would be and the first And so I'm an advocate of um, it going through the winter. Now, this is the nuts and bolts question before y'all get out of here and before we vote. I think it's going to move to special affairs. Mr. Moss, are your organization caught up as we got outstanding bills and invoices? We didn't heard from contractors. I want my colleagues to know that it's folks out there eyeballing stuff, 30 Flint people getting paid. Um, this 1.1 million, you asked a great question, Mr. Griggs, we'll see it itemized between now and 4.30, and I would suggest we see that for Mr. Griggs. His vote is just as valuable as everybody else's. Mr. Moss, okay. is y'all caught up at the end of this contract? What's happening on that end? Sir, if you remember what I, what I brought to you in terms of the modification, we have been advancing the city. Sure. So to answer your question directly, no, we're not caught up. Okay. Okay. Are we caught up in terms of invoicing? 
that we've put in, yes, I think we're up to about October. That's where we are. Yeah, y'all are multi million dollar we're company. Billion, are so billion, we're, you know, we're, billion we're a dollar. billion dollar company. So y'all can stand some of the heat that I couldn't while I make things. So I happen. think we I think we stood a lot of heat. Okay, good. We wanna I wanna keep you working. I wanna keep you managing. You are a good department. Rob Benzik, you think they're a good department to work with? See, and our public works director say yeah. So I'm gonna encourage my colleagues to think hard, get ready. We can't keep holding up 1.1 million. Are y'all ready to vote to send this to special affairs and then from special affairs, hopefully it'll go to council for passage. Mr. Davis? Yeah, thank Cause you. Mr. Griggs, I don't want oh. him to leave, but go ahead, Mr. Davis, you got the floor. All I want to say, yes, we could vote to send to uh, special affairs, but I also want to put on record that I wholeheartedly support y'all, Mr. Moss. So it'll 100% like Councilman Mays, 100% I'm supporting to move this without any other delay. And whether it's Ed Thorpe or Miranda or somebody, if you got eyes and ears here, I think that's the only outstanding question. I'm going to be voting yes to move it to special affairs and to approve it on Monday. So you'll know that. You count two votes. And so that's what I do in discussion on motions. I like to hear people say I'm going to support it or deny it, the reasons pro, the reasons con. In this, in this meeting, I was kind of filibustering. I was waiting for Mr. <laughs> President Winfrey to come back. And I don't like filibusting. But the part I like about filibusting is when I hear myself talk. Y'all ready to vote on postponing this to uh, special affairs? But even though it was a filibuster, it was good information came out. So I don't want Mr. Cox to lose sleep. I don't want you to lose sleep. And I don't want people flying back and forth but at the same time, don't stop praying, because right. I can't never count right. But I think in this one, I'm going to be voting in favor. This is a motion to postpone the special affairs. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye or raise your hand. Aye. aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? I would record that vote as a six to zero vote moving forward to special affairs. And um, I would say y'all can call and talk to me loosely. We had one request. I didn't hear any other requests. I'm not asking people to come to Special Affairs. Uh, you can look at us in video, online, live feed, and whether you hear or not, you'll see that vote Monday night. I'm going to predict that it's going to move from Special Affairs to Council, not back to committee. Um, I'm counting three, four, maybe, I don't know, five votes and it's a done deal. AECOM, every time I've asked you to show up, you've showed up. You've sworn in six and seven strong at investigative hearings. I'm gonna fight for you, I'm gonna push for you, and I don't bite my tongue. If it's something I don't like, I'll tell you. Mr. Thorpe, I like you. I ain't never had a lot of dealings. Mr. Moss, I've talked to you. I got your cell phone. I know you. I'll talk to you. Um, Mr. Wong, I liked. And Darby, I liked. But y'all got a big company, people moving. And I said, man, I don't want to see Wong move. Should I call Mr. Moss? I stayed out of it because I don't know. Y'all might have had him on a secret mission. Y'all got this Flint under control. I don't know. But I'm not going to let nobody think that I ain't a person who likes folks. And if I don't like you, that's probably because you didn't talk bad about me wrongfully. But I like most all folks until they kind of go south. Okay, let's get back to the agenda. Mr. President. Um, thank you for your time. Thank everybody who was here. Um, I called Mr. Luster in because before AECOM was here, I had to rely on somebody. And I want everybody to know Mr. Luster ain't um, giving me wrong information over three years. I'll continue to talk to him. Mr. Chair. Um, the next agenda item on Finance Committee meeting is a resolution. I'd like to entertain Ms. a motion. Mr. Chair. Mr. Ms. Worthy. I am leaving and it's going to break quorum, so actually I'd like to make a motion to... Move all the resolutions at the same time. 
Uh, is that what I want to do? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so it's... <laughs> uh, sure. It's been, it's been moved to um, move all the resolutions. President Winfrey. I second the motion. Okay. Ten minutes. You know, I know what committee we have. Okay, look. So that means one eight zero six zero nine one eight zero six one zero one eight zero six one 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 eight zero six one two and one eight zero six one three has been moved to um, motion the move to council. Any discussion, Mr. Newsom? One eight zero six one three. This is that biennial budget. Um, do we ain't got to do no presentation, no nothing tonight. I'm understanding we got some amendments to that resolution. We got a point one. We got a point one. We got a point one resolution. Yes. I would like somebody to make a, I would like to entertain a motion. They just and got like they, to a resolution to receive it tonight. Resolution be passed out to the and members. Then we will is that is that, is that one eight zero six one three? It's an amended one. resolution for one eight zero six one three. The biennial right. budget resolution. Okay, so so. So let's separate 180613. Yeah. I'd separate that without objection. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any more discussion on the other resolutions? No. Okay. All in favor of moving these resolutions to council, signify by saying aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 All opposed? I count that as a five to zero. They moved to council. I'm glad, Ms. Worthy. Five. Is making the quorum, and so believe me, we didn't had five people carrying the weight. Miss Worthing, congratulations! You are taking care of business this night. I hope you don't get on punishment um, for being gone too long. Now we on the separation. Okay, that's why I want to entertain a motion to change one eight zero. To a 613.1. Mr. Chair. And these are the proposed changes in a resolution. Have anybody got copies? And do the council have copies of this resolution? I would ask that they be passed to council. Yes, we do. And then we'll talk about the standards. Ms. Wheeler, this is your copy. Okay, so I'm going to show you where the changes were made. At. Okay, the changes on this resolution, if you, if you look at the heading, you'll see the word adopting a preliminary proposed biannual budget. That, that wording has changed to receiving. And then when you look down at the be it resolved, that accepts um, has changed to receives. And then the final change is on the be it further resolved, um, the 20 has days behind it, and the language formal adoption of this resolution is scratched. So those are the changes that I would read into the record, and so that um, those changes has been passed out in the resolution received, and I'd like to entertain a motion that this new revised resolution be a 180613.1. I'd like to entertain that motion. Mr. President. Mr. Chair, I move that we revise the 180613 to a 180613.1. Is there a second? Mr. Davis. Mr. President, I, I mean, Mr. Mays, I, I, Councilman Mays, I second. It's been moved and properly second that we change this to a point .1. Um, any further discussion on the changed resolution? All in favor signify by saying aye or raise your hand. Aye. aye. All opposed? That motion to change this and amend this to a point one has passed. Mr. Newsom, now as we get ready to move on this resolution, what do you need us to know charter-wise? Janelle, you want to say it? 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. And so it would move to the... Right. I don't mind working on Christmas. So, so... <laughs> hey, 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 I'm going to give her her first warning. <laughs> Look, I don't want to have to give her her first warning. Go ahead. As, as Janelle was saying, if we had not made these changes and done the point one, in theory, we'd have, we would have to have, um, but once the resolution was adopted on the floor, we have between 10 and 20 days, which gets us right into Christmas, um, to um, have the presentation and go, go forward from there. So that's why we change it from adoption to receiving for right now. And we and struck that we'll last. And we'll correct that when Janelle want to not concentrate on the holiday and work overtime. <laughs> And then that a formal adoption of this resolution was stricken because now that means that 10 to 20 days we can present after the new year as opposed to the clock ticking after the resolution is is, is Y'all understand that, Mr. President? Got it. Okay, so I would entertain a motion to um, what send this resolution amended as a point one to, to receive it. But the... Oh, the resolution we just the, receiving. Here, so I'd entertain a motion to receive this resolution, and um, the resolution, I guess, we receiving something from you. What is it, Mr. Newsom, or what is it, Janelle? See, I think you have to <clears throat> pass the resolution. All right, now, see there, see there. Now we on track. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to try it again, but I want to check and double check. You, you got it? You, we good? All right. I'll entertain a motion to um, move this amended resolution 180613.1 to council. Mr. Chair. Or to special affairs or whatever you choose, Mr. President. I move that. Uh we move 180-613.1 to council. Three point. Um, is there a second? Mr. Um, Chairman, Ms. I Ms. second that motion. Ms. Winfrey Carter has been moved and properly second that this amended resolution move to council. Um, any other discussion? All in favor, hearing none, all in favor signify uh, by saying aye and or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So that resolution passes five to zero to move the council. And I, Mr. Newsom, I appreciate your call earlier this week. We finding out things in the budget, I mean in the charter that we didn't know we're doing a decent job keeping up with charter changes. I don't think we went to jail, gonna go to jail. Mr. Um, Branch, did Mr. Branch spot that out and tell you or you found that on your own? No, I, I'm gonna have to give it to the city attorney and Miss Brown. Oh, Miss yeah. Wheeler. We're working together. And, uh, Who? Well, and Miss Inez Brown. And, uh, oh, Davina. we got some team and effort I'm going. Sorry. And Davina. And Davina. And Davina. It was a team effort. Oh, I like to identify people. I hope I can figure something out and get me a prize. Good job. <laughs> and so now I would ask that um, somebody make a motion because we're on discussion <coughs> items. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll entertain a motion as to these discussion items. Mr. President. Mr. Chair, I move that we postpone the discussion items to the next Finance Committee meeting. Is there a second? I second that. Ms. Worthen seconds it. And so, any discussion on it? Boy, I tell you what, look at this agenda here. All right, all in favor of both pawn and discussion items, signify by saying aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? That vote passed to postpone them for two weeks, I'm going to assume, to the next finance agenda uh, meeting, and that would pass five to zero. I would entertain a motion to adjourn the um, Finance Committee meeting, but before I do, we got a hearing on the 12th. Um, I've signed subpoenas 
again for Amy Epke. I've requested Rich Baird and Governor Snyder. Those subpoenas are being drawn up. Probably will go out tomorrow. Win, lose, or draw their test cases for state officials and people coming in telling us why they want to hold up money or the flow of money, and we will test it by taking it to circuit court. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn Finance Committee meeting, Ms. Worthy. I make a motion to adjourn Finance Committee and postpone all, can we do that? Postpone all the other committees? There's a motion on the flow. Can I do that? Um, Mr. Win Mr. Mr. Winfrey? I second the motion. Okay, it's been a motion to uh, adjourn the Finance Committee meeting and uh, postpone others. Now, under the rules of adjournment and or postponement, um, there's a discussion of eligibility on postponing and setting dates and stuff. Um, but, you know, even without that in there, um, as a chair, let's see what happened with this motion. Um, any further discussion on this motion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. nay. I oppose. So that motion failed. Ms. Oh, Worthing, what I want you to do is separate them motions. That motion fails four to one. So I would ask that I'd entertain a motion Three to more. postpone, I mean to four. adjourn finance. I, I make a motion to adjourn finance. Uh, Mr. President. I second the motion. It's been moved and properly second to adjourn finance. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? The motion to adjourn finance passes five to zero. Mr. The President? The reason I separated it is because it's an action item on governmental ops. Oh. I make a motion that we postpone the rest of the committees. There's sure. a motion. We ain't in it. We ain't in Wait, session. Wait, we're not we in session, so we got no yeah. No, we just adjourned finance. Yeah. yeah, just adjourned finance. But a point of order, I want him to call. Who next, legislative or government? Order? So once you call yours to order, then we. I just want to go. I know you do. <laughs> but call your <laughs> committee to order. Please. I'd like to call the legislative committee to order. I'll take a motion, Mr. President. OK, Mr. <laughs> Ma Madam Chair. Madam Chair, Mr. Mays. I see your goal, and your goal is to adjourn and postpone committee actions, but we got um, an action item, a resolution on um, governmental ops. So I would do it after that, but okay. let's get through governmental ops. So I would move that we, um, on legislative, I would move that we um, postpone the, hold up. Let me do this. Okay. Let me do this. Um, let, okay. let me do this, Madam Chair. Can I move 180523 to special affairs? Okay, I would. Okay, so I she says still stop. questions. I would move to postpone 180523 to the next legislative committee meeting. Okay. Um, Ms. <laughs> Mr. Winfrey? Mr. Chair, I second that motion. Okay, there's been a motion that's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any nays? Okay. Madam, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Mays. I would ask that all other items on the agenda be postponed for two weeks to the next legislative committee or whenever two weeks or the next legislative committee, I would ask and make that motion. Uh, Mr. Winfrey? Madam Chair, I second the motion. Motion's been made and seconded to postpone all the other items on the legislative committee until next committee meeting. Are, is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? Motion carries. Madam Chair. Mr. Mays. I would ask to adjourn, um, I would move to adjourn legislative committee. Does that need a second, <laughs> Mr. Winfrey? Madam Chair, I, I uh, second the motion. There's been a motion made and seconded to adjourn. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? Legislative meeting is adjourned. I would like to call the uh, Operations Committee meeting to order.
Mr. President. You mean grants? I'm sorry. No, operations. Governmental oh. ops. I'm sorry. Oh, oh yeah. Governmental ops. I'm so tired. Yep. Councilman Mays. Mr. President, yes, I would like to move to postpone the executive session, the special orders, everything on here um, for two weeks except for the resolutions. So I would move to postpone everything on here except for resolutions 1805981801805590 and 180591. I would move to postpone everything else and to the next governmental ops and then um, circle back on those two resolutions. There's a motion on the floor to postpone everything but the three resolutions. Two. You said one eight zero oh, five three. eight nine. Three. Uh, is there is there support for that motion? Mr. President. Councilman. I second. It's been supported. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Yes. I'd, I'd like to make a substitute <clears throat> motion okay. to postpone everything but one eight zero five eight nine. Um, Mr. There's President. A, there's a motion on the floor Mr. to postpone President. everything. Oh, okay. I see what that motion. Mr. President, I can support that um, substitute motion. Okay. And uh, it's been supported. Is there any discussion on the motion? Second, as a substitute motion? All in favor, please signify by. Yes. yes. Yeah. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Uh, Mr. What's, the, what's the pleasure of one eight Councilman? Mr. President, I would um, move to one eight zero five eight nine. I would move that to special affairs. There's a motion on the. I know it. I know. It. We'll do that in discussion. Okay. There's a there's a motion to move one eight zero five eight nine to special affairs. Is there support for the motion, Mr. President? Councilwoman, I support that. There's a, been support for it. Is there any discussion on the motion? Yeah, um, Janelle is right. We got a deadline. We got to move on this, probably this meeting, because we don't want to end up with all these land bank properties. So it's a method to my madness. We got the list. We looking at some. We got four of the seven pretty much locked down from last year. That's going to sell. So I'm going to try to give an update by Monday. Okay. And then I at least see three or so. And I would encourage you all to look around. And if you see some, fine. If you don't. But I see about three or so so far. And I'm going to be bringing that um, for an amended um, one eight zero five eight nine point one. Um, so I'll do that. And so I appreciate the support getting this to um, special affairs. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Same sign. Mr. Chairman. Councilman May. I would move that we adjourn the uh, governmental operations uh, committee meeting. There's a motion on the floor.